Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. On this episode, we'll be tackling some listener questions. We'll be going over the Fantastic Four Empire organized play kit uh, that was previewed here recently. And we've got a guest on this week. This is episode 377. Let's make Hero Clicks the way it should be. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how would six I, people I think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make Hero Clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. All right, so uh, like always, we, we're we joined here in the studio uh, with, of course, uh, my good friend, the Billion Clicks Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, we actually are starting? Well, then, Yeah, uh, yeah, why not? I can, I can do a what? retake. I can shoot the intro later. It's fine. Oh, God. Tons, tons of stuff is starting and happening. So many things. Um, yep. Having a good time. Yeah, good. We, uh, we have, of course, a uh, guest, Patreon. Uh, good fan of the show here. We have uh, Matt Reed. What's going on, Matt? Oh, not much, you know. Just chatting with you guys. Played some hero clicks today. All right, right on. So, uh, like, like what we want to do is we just want to get to know you, man. So, how long have you been playing hero clicks, and what kind of got you started into the game? So, first set was Earth X, and it was actually already out. Uh, but that's the first set I ever bought. It's kind of funny. Before I purchased that, I actually was watching Smosh Games. You guys remember Smosh Games on YouTube at all? Smosh Games. Oh, yeah. I've seen their uh, Try Not to Laugh series. Yeah. Um, So they did a tabletop series where uh, uh, Jovenshire, I think was his name, was actually a DM type thing where he was playing hero clicks, but it was different. He was doing scenarios where they had characters that had to go do something, and he would actually just have random encounters where he put out hero clicks. And I was super like, what the heck is this? You know, I was watching Marvel and, uh, you know, have all my favorite, you know, Marvel characters. So I was like, well, I'm going to look it up. And that's when I found out it was Hero Clicks and decided to buy my first brick on Amazon. And, uh, uh, you know, when you, when you get that, and it came with a pack and everything because I got the starter with it. And uh, I tried to play with my friend and played, uh, I, I played, we played a game that was completely wrong. Uh, cause we just did not understand the rules. And uh, of course I found a venue that I showed up to. And when I tried to play like I did with my buddy, I learned everything I ever did in that game. <laughs> I misunderstood oh, no. and did not, they were like, you cannot do that. I nope, like, oh. that doesn't work. Like, I that doesn't, yeah. but now, you know what, if I would have got into the game now, I was doing things right. I was like, dude, I'm going to blaze exploit this and that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just doing it all, and then they're like, "I can, no, I you can can't do you." I'm next to you. Yeah, yeah. That makes oh, sense. that was the like, one. Okay, then, out yeah. of everything, everything that was the one thing I was really mad. I pulled up to somebody, and I'm like, "Outwit," and I was like, "No, I'm in stealth." But I'm like, "I'm standing next to you. I can clearly touch you. It's like you can, I can hit you, right?" I'm like, no. It's like that's not how it works. I'm like, stealth is busted. I don't like this. This doesn't make sense. But no, I learned pretty fast uh, that I need to learn better and so luckily luckily even though i didn't know anything uh i had some guys there they're actually really cool at our venue uh spencer and matt hidden they were the first people i played with and they you know showed me the ropes and and are actually really good hero clicks players so they actually showed me what to do and uh uh you know pretty much said you don't want to do that you want to do this this is how you're going to get better damage so they weren't jerks to me and just smashed me my first time like they could have and you know, been on their way. So luckily I learned pretty quickly and uh, got better, but still not, still not great. I make my mistakes. I don't know how many times I forget to outwit something. I, I forget that power every time. Yeah. So, uh, nice. but no, other than that, uh, and then uh, my buddies at the venue make fun of me because the next set that came out was ABPI. And I got what they were calling uh, your first like set. Uh, I don't know. They're calling it something like your first set you buy too much of. Uh, and, of course, mm. I bought six cases of it. Oh, wow. Dang, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had nothing. I had zero. I had, like, 
one brick of Earth X, and I was like, so cool with the gems. And I just got off the in game high. Oh, or was yeah. In game, or which one? Uh, was Zen the, game. Uh, yeah, Zen game. Uh, yeah, so I was so. like, dude. And you this looks York. awesome. I was looking at all these chases and all this cool stuff. So I was like, dude, I just all in. So I pretty much got everything but an ultra chase. Oh, <laughs> so, you got six cases and you didn't get ultra chase Thanos? Nope. From Man. four different places. Well, to be fair, <laughs> so, Calder, uh, I heard Nationals opened, what was it? A uh, hundred cases with no ultra chase? No, no. It was, <laughs> yeah. It was closer to like, no, it was, what, 50? Was it 50? 50. Was it was 50 cases, no old chase. I, yeah. I still think there's, there's a conspiracy about that. I still think they, <laughs> they didn't want anyone to pull the ultra chase personally. Uh, but but no, yeah, uh, as far as like I, dig- value I digress. Goes, depending on like what was, figures you hung on to, uh, that was a very good set to buy into retrospectively because probably got a couple all power the gems. gems are still. Like, I remember Re- I pulled a Re-power Doctor gem. Strange with Soul Gem, and that thing's still, like, 60 70 bucks, something like that. Oh, yeah, Doctor Strange is expensive. Well, I actually, that's another one I didn't get. I didn't get a Doctor Strange oh. out of those 60 cases. So, Dude. But I did get three Power Gems. <laughs> I, I literally, I bought three bricks, and I got every single gem. Ego Gem, Strange, like all of that. I can't believe really? you got, yeah, six cases, and you weren't able to, to do it. That's just. But I was happy. I didn't care. I was that's all that matters. Hey, no, that, was that's like, all that matters. And that is a fun sealed set. Did you play oh, yeah. like a bunch of sealed with that? That was a awesome. sealed set. Um, in team sealed, I think I beat someone. Uh, who we don't was, have to. We don't have to talk about that. I can't remember what they were running. Uh, I think <laughs> like, yeah, an, uh, an Electra, a shifting focus mm-hmm. Electra or something like that. Maybe. Um, Maybe. What I, I don't know. What else were you at... running in sealed at night? <laughs> I, I had shifting focus Electra. I had aim red. <laughs> I had the Captain America with the time gem, uh, and I had like some other weird like close attacker or something. Ant-Man. I'm missing like a hundred something points of my. I didn't have Ant Man. No, I had. It was like it was like Challenger or somebody like that. The crouchy puncher oh, yeah. guy, not Challenger, but Champion. one of them fighter. Our brand? I'm a like star brand guy. Maybe champion. No, I wasn't star brand. I wasn't a chase. We didn't pull a chase. Oh. Um, I don't even know, man. It was something like that. It was the it was the crouchy guy with the glowy fists in hmm. APPI. Hmm. He maybe can also start with the gem, oh, the power yeah. gem. Yeah, that sounds. What's his face? It sounds like a I, champion. Challengers the probably the one champion. With the pyramid tokens. Yes, it was champion. Yeah, it was champion. Did I have him on my team? He almost looks too good now for me to believe he was on my team. Well, you definitely Anyways. lost to me, so that, that's all I remember Maybe. from that. Maybe. Uh, but who, whose team? But whose team won that round? If I recall, it was oh, my man. team that won that round. I don't think it mattered to me because, because you know, if you beat one person, it's like you beat all three of them to me. So. Yeah, but it's almost like uh, my other teammates beat both of your teammates. All right, so. let's not drag Sean and Charles <laughs> under the bus like that. They tried to. <laughs> We didn't uh, name drop them too. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one knew who they were. They're like, let's not do Sean and Charles. It's okay. They the beat bus. us. The they beat us at Worlds. Like they six did beat us later, at Worlds pretty uh, handily. So yeah, that's because you weren't on their team. They that's they were like true. out for blood against you. Yeah, yeah. they definitely. See, I don't know it. if you guys from. Remember, I, I I didn't know you guys, but I saw you guys at Worlds. I actually went to Worlds the first oh. year that I started playing. And I was the sad puppy that had nobody like uh, like the people I was playing with already had teams already like <sighs> made, and I was like, oh man, I, you know this team sealed seems really cool, but there was no uh, no teams were looking at the time, and I just didn't know where to look to find somebody. And uh, of course, before Facebook, I got on all the trade stuff, um, so I had no way of finding somebody. And I was like, well, uh, it's okay. I'll just play sealed and try to get as much stuff from uh, the animated VR. series so i played like 12 sealed or something like that oh yeah uh, that, that was great <laughs> that was a great way to like make the money back from that trip now i don't remember seeing you because i think i would have been like i would have been calling cats labs and being like hey one of your superhumans has escaped uh this no, dude yeah. is just like I, throwing we, tables across the <laughs> venue we did not play each other but i just happened to uh see you guys i think i started listening to the podcast and i think you said you were gonna wear a cowboy hat or something like that to make fun of Calder. <laughs> and I think you did yeah. show up with it. And I was yeah, like, okay, that must uh, be that. I was like, they must be the people on the podcast. Cause I yeah. did not know your faces. I was like, that must be them. I think days so. one and two, um, 
So I shaved my face to like a goatee because uh, if you're okay. listening and you don't know for sure, uh, Calder typically doesn't have any <laughs> facial hair, or at least not very much. And I typically always, do always. have quite a bit. So I shaved down to like a evil uh, mirror universe version of Calder, and I was calling myself Nalder Kess all weekend. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know that part. <laughs> yeah, so I, I the worst part was going through like the airport and TSA with that <laughs> facial hair and just being like, "Oh man, don't don't look like your uh, ID here, sir." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Oh, this looks this looks very suspicious in like a number of ways. I would not trust somebody with this facial hair." But honestly, playing in worlds was a great way of because our venue we probably have five people show up with me included uh, on a regular basis and getting to go to that thing and seeing a whole bunch of different people and playing, you know, all kinds of people was different to me. Uh, Cause you know, you play your own people so many times, they kind of have their niche that they do. And so it was just interesting. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Playing more people get to definitely like way more perspectives and kind of like tactics and stuff that you might not be used to. I know, my local venues, I never have to worry about retaliators or uh, like ID cards, um, but they they really love their special objects. So there's become this like weird, <laughs> uh, like small town meta kind of scene where it's like about equipping power gems and stuff, and also trying oh, yeah. to keep your opponents from doing that. So a lot of people <laughs> play in like collector, a lot of people play in stuff where you can like run over and sneak and. St- like steel equipment and then yeah. of course the, all the teams playing equipment for sure uh so Bad. speaking of a abpi uh since you started what are some of your favorite pieces or combos that you've you've really like hooked on to that you really like playing over and over again so i have been i really like uh, weapon H because he's the closest Holt that I could find that was actually somewhat good enough to put on a you know competitive team and doesn't get smoked uh, from when I was actually started playing competitive. But uh, I think I've collected all of the Deadpool's, even the Ultra Chase on the Unicorn, and so I collected all those just because they were so crazy looking and I love the uh, I love anything that's like uh, like some of the what if like uh, anything that's venomized and all these cool looking different figures and some of the coolest ones that came out were all the chases in the uh uh spider-man absolute carnage set oh yeah sure i mean some of some of the coolest things ever because uh that was the first that's actually the first set i completed all the chases uh just because they were all so interesting and cool uh but any deadpools i got every hulk that i could find that was in reason that had a card uh I didn't go back far enough to any of the uncarded stuff just because uh, I I just didn't wasn't very interested in it and the figures didn't look near as good to me as the ones nowadays do with the uh, with the detail. But uh, I play that uh, Unicorn Deadpool a lot just for fun and it's trash because it I think it, from what I remember it has charge even though it has penetrating psychic blast or something like that on it yeah and so you can't running shot with it and so it's kind of like i think the only way i got around with it was i actually did good when i put the exo specs on it so i can actually choose a power that would actually work with it but but it's fun to run just just because it's interesting looking and different and it might uh, have gotten better with the rules change because um charge like actually well, it doesn't stack with like pen side, but like it, it stacks yeah. with uh, exploit, exploit objects and different stuff. And I think he's he's got like traded blades or something. Yes, so, he does have traded blades. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it was always he's okay. I remember um, was that Isaac Denke pulled him in the Omaha WKO or something. He pulled him in like the sealed Deadpool X Four sealed pulled that and a few other things from that set like the uh whatever like the little squirrel was and like some other things and he ended up winning so he not only pulled an ultra chase but then he won an ultra chase as well i, was, I think he just played like cable right which is like it was just that ultra chase deadpool and then literally just like the common cable i think 
probably wow. the really cable was the cable from that it set was such an was great and, uh, sealed for in that set. Oh yeah, absolutely. But yeah, that nah, Deadpool's I, I, no slouch. It's definitely got a weird wonky dial, but it's like it can also take you from surprise. Like if I've played against it in casual like games before, and it can definitely be like a, a thorn in the side if you aren't prepared for it. Yeah, see, I, now I've made a commitment to the guys at my venue. I said I'm going to play because we we were uh, I met Calder at the uh, Tank Open, and they're doing their competitive stuff there. And I, I played a, a Spider-Man team and a couple other things just to get by. But I made a commitment when this set came out, this newest uh, set. Um, I'm just going to try to make Ultra Chase Deadpool viable in a 300 modern setting. Whether it works or not, I could just be hanging myself out to dry trying to do it. But we'll see what happens. We're, we're trying my best here to see if I can make it viable. But I've been told I might be, uh, uh, I don't know, going up the wrong tree with it. I feel like uh, definitely need to maybe equip like stones of Merlin or something. Well, but I love I love what he does. So what I, what the only thing that we have kind of come up with is you put the lightning ring on him. He equips the lightning ring, and somebody else has to equip um, incandescence, the ring. And so the only reason you don't make him equip both of them is I don't want to put two action tokens on him and wait till turn three uh, to do anything with them. But he sure. can he can tell even friendly or opposing that they can't use the equipment and he can. So therefore, he can take that ring and equip it and use it. And therefore, you have running shot oh. with six range. And then you can do a yeah, uh, it doesn't specify energy explosion. Opposing yep. characters. So yeah, you can... Nope. Sure. And so then you can do energy explosion for three penetrating damage on everybody adjacent and get them all cake tokens. Nice. I like it. That's pretty so fun. If you do want to give them all cake tokens, you should be a member of the Patreon like Matt here because we did just oh, print yeah. off some cake tokens. And uh, we'll get, I'll well, make sure to get those sent out. It, they're awesome. Yeah, I, actually, I need more of them because I went against a team that had uh, 12 people on it. Oh, then yeah. All, <laughs> I, had tw- I, I actually hit all 12 with the three penetrating damage energy explosion. Got to do so it. All, <laughs> but, it, you know, he was running a uh, Old Man Logan, Fe- or the Phoenix Old Man Logan. I don't uh, so he came and hit me with the power gem he had it equipped Ooh. and he hit me with the power gem Ooh. for seven but at 200 points it just puts me in my stop and everybody wow. gets sucked to me and i can't get hit anymore <laughs> so he only got one flurry off because i become immune and i really so, do love those stop clicks those are just so great and so it's pretty cool but the other thing you got to equip to somebody else is you got to get three things equipped pretty much is what i found is somebody else needs to equip wonder woman bracelets so you can copy that or you have to put somebody on your team that yeah, has that. Oh, right. yeah so so your senses are better but yeah. and like you said the cool thing about stones of merlin is he can copy that on uh, a friendly and even if he rolls bad he doesn't have to unequip it because he doesn't have it equipped yeah he doesn't lose it yeah that would be oh, good oh that's true yeah yeah so it's another thing that we thought about but i don't know uh, having those two rings on of course it's kind of cool realize... because it's somebody... so yeah because yeah. he gets the effect and the the other character doesn't it's not like um scarab where if like scarab would were to do that and rolled poorly um the equipped character would have to like drop or whatever i can't remember exactly <laughs> how that works but yeah i guess like that's not the part of this Deadpool that I was really like looking at was like the, the ability to double up on objects, but that is a very cool part of him. The thing mostly, I thought about was, I mean, just, you're like, never going to stats are great. I mean, you're never going to do it on your first turn anyways, because you're not going to be, I mean, I may be, they may be up in your face already, but your guys are always right next to you. So you at least on that first turn want to do that. And if you have a sky tyrant with a power gym, gym, of course you don't want that. So you definitely no. want to take that away later on. Maybe if he gets sucked up to you, at least you can say, okay, you can't do that anymore. You the can only do thing it. We could, <laughs> then you're a 14 uh, for five exploit plates. Like. Uh, and see, I couldn't figure out this too, because we couldn't figure out how, uh, who gets to choose the placing of the characters whenever they get pulled to you. Is it me or is it the opponent? I'd be active uh, player. I almost would always the active. Pl- yeah. So when this okay. is first revealed, place all opposing characters with slice of cake token adjacent to gains immune. 
Yeah, so sadly, I believe that almost always would be the opposing character. Oh, what happens whenever you have eight people that need to be placed against you, but can't because you only have six places available? Mm. Uh, so that goes into like the the rule of occupancy. Um, uh-huh. So if you can't place adjacent, you have to place in what you would consider like the nearest square. Okay. So yeah. they'd be just a little bit outside of you. Okay. Yeah, so you I mean, it makes sense. The, the eight squares. What is it? Um, I think I only had six yeah. because of the fact that I was next to a couple blocking. So there was a couple pieces missing. Right. So he only had six people that could be placed next to me without, yeah, you know, the overflow. And just like that, like if you were next to a wall, of course, there's like that wall creates a barrier of adjacency. Mm-hmm. So you would essentially have, like, if you have three squares next to you that are wall. And then you only have uh, five squares that are open. You'd go those five, and then mm-hmm. your opponent, whoever's placing, would uh, place right outside of those five. But they'd be like as close as possible without breaking okay. any I'm, kind of rules. Yeah, I kind of broke that. I messed up then because so, I placed their characters thinking I was supposed to put them somewhere, but I must been. That's when you look just... at them, you're like, "Are you gonna tell me no? Are you gonna say <laughs> I can't do this?" Yeah, that's what I oh. thought. Stop and just me. do whatever you want. Physically stop me from doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would say. You see these forearms? Yeah, oh, I did my man. 37 dial clicks today. Yeah, yeah. you're intimidated, aren't you? I can you? open a jar of oh. peanut butter, as Simeon Bruce claimed. <laughs> Once again, on peanut butter. butter. Not a hard <laughs> jar to open. <laughs> I don't understand. The plastic yeah, no, lid. <laughs> it sure could like, be, though. I bet I could make a jar like, of peanut butter hard to open if I wanted to. Simeon's running the uh, per- peanut butter underneath the uh, hot water. Every time he's trying to get his yeah. peanut butter, banging it on the desk, like man, oh jeez, I just want a little bit of peanut butter today. And you're like you know, knock it on the desk a few times, like jeez, goodness gracious, they really yeah. make these threaded co- jars hard to open. And see, the, uh, I think he actually has the best use of plasticity too, because he actually has it on the stop click, and it actually works because they don't they they become a, they're like they actually have to break away then. Uh, yeah. And so I I didn't realize because Calder played me uh, a few times uh, to practice for the tank open, and I thought my little moloids, you know, they're scurrying around. I thought, oh, he can't get to me. Tyrant's gonna have to stop because the plasticity stops your uh, movement. And uh, no, no, he just goes right past me. Plasticity no, is uh, it's dead. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. The yeah. um, the rules changes to plasticity, and then Sky Tyrant having uh, improved movement characters. Yeah. 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 Improved movement characters is real tough to get around, but uh, that was like one of the one of the main reasons, in my opinion, that um, Prime Vulture was just such a menace. Was there is no way to lock him down. Like yeah. it would be, it would have been a much different game had you been able to just like TK somebody next to him and been like, all right, you got to break away for charge. But that was never the situation because he had improved mm. movement characters. So. But yeah. yeah, plasticity <sighs> does in a situation where your your opponent is placing all of their characters next to you when you hit that click, they have to be extremely careful and they have to like really kind of figure out how they want to do it because yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's not leaving them up to a bunch of options. Plus, with the new rules, triple target for close means you're you're 13 for 3 with pen damage like and here's the cool thing. If you uh, uh, this is the other thing we thought it uh, in that ring, you get the plus one your damage on close attacks. It just means that you're making multi attacks. <laughs> so yeah. all, mm-hmm. so yeah, as all long as you all, use the bull, yeah. Yep, as funny. long as you're using bolts, so your close yeah, attacks so will actually to target. Yeah. So you can actually do zero damage to a character and do at least one because one damage has to go through. That's funny. So just, <laughs> nice. just something we learned. <laughs> yeah. You, but, that's great. Yeah. So uh, after like talking about all this team building, I think we've got a good scope of what kind of player you are. But uh, how do you how do you think you play? A mix of casual and competitive, lean more to one side or to the other, or how would you uh, describe I, yourself for that? I, I think I play just about anything. I like competitive. I, I, I'm a competitive person. I, I do lots of uh, 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 just any kind of competitive sport. I mean, I played football and I played. Uh, I did strongman. I was a, a, a pro strongman for a while, and then uh, uh, did a. Uh, uh, I just started doing powerlifting the last three years, 
and uh, just, uh, you know, in the lifting side, I'm always competitive. So I always look towards the competitive side, but I do like to just have fun. Like I'll go out there and I'll play. Uh, it's a joke. I always come out with these stupid dupes. I come out with all the dupes and I always try to roll the stupid six on the dupe just to call in the Mjolnir attack Ooh, one time. That one. Yeah. And, and so I love, I, I'll come out there and, and, and I, I don't know. There's a lot of times I'll just come out there with jokey stuff and have, I, I mean, uh, either way, I look to have fun, whether I'm playing competitive or not. Even if I was losing, I have pretty much fun the whole time. I've never been... There's only one or two times I've actually been really mad during a game. And that was at a local our local venue when somebody showed up with... Uh, 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 oh, shoot. He played Star Fox with the... Uh, this is when I first started playing, and I didn't know any of the rules Star hardly. Star Fox, Hawkeye, and, uh, and Giant Girls. Was that like the guy? Nope. That... Nope. No? It was Star Fox... With the Mjolnir, he okay. had that, yeah, yeah. and then he had the, the uh, Thanos copter and spectral, whichever one makes it where your movement can only go down, goes down even more. It was a giant size figure. Sp- oh, um, not uh, uh, Eternity. 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 Yeah. So I was, you so know, you I was playing this guy three to <laughs> speed and range, I believe, with that so, setup. Yep. So it was that, and then it was a couple other things, but uh, uh. I was playing a guy at our venue that doesn't play anymore, but he literally uh, did not treat you like a new guy. Like if you like, uh, I actually thought I got an attack in. Like I was only able to charge three. I thought I thought I could charge four, but uh, he told me, of course, I was minus three, and so I placed the character down, about to make the charge, and he goes, "Well, you can't do that. That's just a move action. You're done." And I go, well, hold on, well, I didn't, what are you talking about? He's like, well, it's minus three to that. So I was like trying to put it back. And he goes, nope, you took your hand off the piece. It's over. You have to your action what? figure token now. Oh, man. And so, Wild. and so I'm over here like, okay, well, this kind of sucks. Well, you know. And, Little and, did I know it was the final match of Worlds. So everything <laughs> was very precise. So, the, the, you know, and, and I was warned about him. Everybody's like, just be, you know, it's like, he's going to be that way. Just don't. It's like just, just, and I was okay with it, but it was the first time I actually was like blood boiling, like I'm gonna play this game, but I'm not having fun. And that was the first time I was, because he also uh, showed up another time with three of those uh, all seeing Nick Fury's balls of fury is what oh, people sure. call them oh or whatever. God. Yeah, yeah. And that was the other time. That was probably the only two games I ever played that I was just super mad. And uh, after that, he didn't play for a while, and I got better. And it was really uh, rewarding to beat him uh, playing figures that I put together uh, when he showed back up because uh, I actually knew the rules and knew what uh, games he was going to play with. If I make one mistake, he's going to make me keep it or cause a scene. <laughs> so, Man. but uh, yeah, it, but it's rewarding in a way because I beat him. And so I can always be like, okay, well, I beat him, whatever. Everybody's beatable. Man, yeah. at the moment, at the moment, that was like you guys joke about flipping tables. I've never flipped a table, but man, it was like that was the point. I was the closest to flipping the table and being the little voice in your head, the devil on your shoulder, like, do, oh, it. Man. do it. Not only can you do it, but you could also just like flip it and crush, <laughs> like you know, crush the well, star fox in your bare hand. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. I do. Uh, I, I do a lot of crushing to get out of uh, get get some steam out with my yeah. other <laughs> job. So. <laughs> That Nick Fury, but, man, uh, that's like, that's one of the rare exceptions where I'm like, man, how did, how did WizKids not see the, like, the potential to run two of these and not make mm. something unique? Because they're like, oh, spider hammer, I busted, better make it unique. <laughs> Nick well, Fury. Well, I'll tell you this. Like, prob control, gets all kind of bonuses, can outwit things that can't be outwitted. No, no, so no. be able to. Run there was something he was. You guys might know. I, I had no idea. I just knew it was happening, and, and I kind of just shut off my brain and just kind of just accepted it. But he was doing something where he was sacking these things he had. He was like, "I will sack this to increase my damage plus this," and he was just like, "I was like, I don't know what's happening." He had these little things in a in a baggie that were. He was. I don't know. It was a feed or something that I've never seen before, but he was sacking. Uh, I can't even remember what they he were. Must, it's been so he, long. I mean, he might have been using like Shield TA to boost Nick's defense well, damage or something. It wasn't. It wasn't that. It was some sort of actual physical uh, lantern type. I don't know if they were lantern type things or what that he was 
sacking on his sideline that he was increasing things. But he, uh, was it like hammers I, or something? Do you have like the book of the school? Uh, maybe. maybe. Like, I, yeah. I, 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 it's been so long. I, stuff, yeah. I, I'll Some be honest resource, with you. Yeah. I, I, it was a resource that I blacked out on and didn't care because he was just like, I'm about to hit you for seven damage. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> uh, you know, at this point, I accept it. I don't care fair, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I ever played against, uh, like prior to ever knowing what resources were or like really caring about like resources or meta gameplay, I was playing like a random scientist theme team. And this is back in like 20. 16 before like scientist theme teams were good um or at least before i could build a good one and the guy <laughs> ran gore the god butcher with a black lantern like fully loaded on him and like it was gore and one other character and i don't remember like the other character did not matter because like gore the god butcher just became like this ridiculously powerful like thing and just ran through my team, and I was like, um, I'm gonna perplex, uh, defense to an 18, and he's like, good, I have a 15 attack, I'm going to shoot you, and I was like, oh, God. okay, I'll prob it, like, it was real bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what he did, but all I remember I'm about was the, like, I'm this gonna lose this bad. prob anyways, might as well prob yeah, it, you know? Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. man, like, Ooh, lanterns man. equal bad. For the rest of my game, uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad it's changed now. It, it's a lot more fun. Uh, I couldn't follow half the stuff that people were doing. I kind of started learning how the batteries work. Somebody brings a battery a lot, a lantern battery where you gotta. They can be. You fun, want it to take damage. But I prefer uh, like builds where everyone has to use one, so that like nobody's at like an advantage or a disadvantage. Um, and it gives I, I just like, a chance for people to like learn about like golden age kind of stuff. <laughs> but the guy was actually being nice. He's like, "You can attack it, but it could land on something good, so you might not want to." And I was like, "Okay, well, how many clicks is it?" And it, I don't know. It's like a kind full dial. A click. And so I'm like, "Okay, I could sink damage into it and possibly give him something really good, or focus on the guys that are literally beating the crap out of me and try to take care of them." So I guess I'll. I'll focus on those, but I don't understand what's happening quite yet, so I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> but For sure. But, yep. So what is, uh, what would be your home venue? Or, like, what's, your, like, your shout-out? If you have a couple, oh. like, what's your favorite? Or We, uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Gear Gaming, or Gear, uh, I think it's Gear Gaming, and uh, I, it's, it's the closest to me. I, it's a 45-minute drive. But uh, it's my one time to get out of the house and have a little break, so I don't mind driving the 45 minutes. Uh, the closest other place would be Tulsa, but it's about an hour and a half, and I got to pay my toll. So mm, I only try to I go down that. there for – yeah, I try to just go down there to play uh, uh, if they have a big event going on or something like that. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Right on. So that's – uh. That pretty much, you know, like lets us know about everything that you're into, man. So why don't we go ahead and get into uh, what made us happy this week, guys? Uh, Simeon, you can go ahead and start. All right. What made me happy this week is, um, you know what? Like, I, I don't necessarily like working on like engines and stuff, but uh, every now and then I get the chance to. So I worked on my friend Subaru. Uh, never worked on a Subaru before, and this is like a 2014. Uh, I looked up the the YouTube like how to change spark. Like every good mechanic. On. Yes, like like a perfect mechanic. I looked up the YouTube on how to, and the worst idea. Like so, I looked at the owner's manual, and the owner's manual is like, take it to a dealer, and I was like, all wow, right, I hate that. That's terrible. Like I just want to know where the spark plugs are. And then uh, I watched the YouTube video, and the guy was like, first, you're going to want to hook the engine up to an engine hoist and pull it out, because otherwise, right. it's going to be a real pain. And uh, boy, howdy, I don't own an engine hoist. So I just uh, used, like, my, my nimble little fingers to, like, <laughs> get in there. But, like, I make you I've, happy. I've, I'm, I've I'm never, waiting for that so, part, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, okay. Growing up, like, uh, on, like, the farm, working on trucks and older, like, muscle cars and stuff, 
all the spark plugs were like on top, like all the cams were on top. Yeah, super easy. Everything's like on top of the engine. It's super easy to get to, super easy to change. These Subaru plugs are like not only down almost below the engine, but they're also adjacent to the frame of like the engine, like the what literally holds the engine in place. So you could only get to them like one socket at a time. So I'd put like the first like I have to I have to pull like the little cap off. Then I have to slide the socket for the spark plug into the like the gap. And then I have to try and slide and like connect the like extension into that because now it's you know, the like socket for the spark plug is like two inches past where I can even reach. It just it's in there somewhere. And now I have to try and like finagle that. And it was it was a nightmare, but uh, I managed to I managed to change all four spark plugs because a, a real cool four cylinder two point five liter engine, oh baby, the power wow. this thing can put out. Uh, I didn't but, hear one happy thought in that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, waiting, <laughs> still waiting to hear it. <laughs> so what made me happy was just the. Uh, sometimes I just really like doing. Um, I do a lot of like physical work at work. And I just like doing something where I can see the end result like immediately. So being able to like turn the car over and like hear the difference and see like the old spark plugs. And I managed to like get them all changed. And it was like touch and go at a few points. But uh, uh, just that, you know, it's like one of the, those like few kind of like not I wouldn't say pleasures, but one of those few kind of like fun things that I don't really get to do anymore because my car is not a car that I will work on whatsoever Uh, everything on my car I take to a mechanic but it's nice to work on cars again so that was really fun Um, even though it was kind of a nightmare at a few points it was fun and uh, yeah it did that sounds like nightmare fuel to me (laughs) I I also like I've I've taken apart my lawnmower Um, every now and then like my lawnmower like start like blowing out like smoke funny or something so I'll like take it apart change spark plugs make sure the gaskets are like in the right spot i like doing small simple engine kind of stuff and it's like it's fun to me because i can like take it apart Uh and i'd be like yep six bolts came out at least five bolts putting it back together that should be good enough. <laughs> like that. If kind you would have caught, if you would have uh, caught me like two weeks ago when I were changing out the starter on my commercial mowers because it went out, it would not have been a this makes me happy thing. It was me <laughs> laying on the ground struggling to get my hand in this stupid small space to try to get a starter off, and then you know expletives coming out and things I had to forgive myself for later on for what I said, <laughs> and then fair. not and then, and then not being happy. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, I I think my hands are a, a little daintier than yours. My forearms might be able to fit in uh, small engines slightly oh, better than your your bare arms. It makes me so mad. Arms. <laughs> makes me so <laughs> mad when I can't get something done. <laughs> Literally just rending metal from its base, like Ugh! that's what I. That's how I that picture does, it. Yeah, that does uh that doesn't fix the problem. That just makes my problem worse. Yeah. <laughs> I I almost want to make what made me happy this week when I got pulled over, just because if we oh, want to go no. with like negative, what made us happy this week, <laughs> oh, just because yeah, like, <clears throat> all right, it, uh, it did was you get pulled over for like washing dishes while you were driving or something um, like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, geez, was that what made was it was it real oh, cute man. when you were washing oh, dishes? Yeah. While oh, you can't, can't have any dish talk, not on the podcast. Uh, I don't want to start that up again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I was coming back from an, an extreme bull riding. Uh, for those that don't know, the differences between a normal bull riding and an extreme bull riding is that they'll do like some cute little pyrotechnics right before and have the cowboys walk out and be like, yep, here they are. And they stomp the fire out on the rodeo grounds. Then, then it's just a normal bull riding after that. But that is what we would call an extreme bull riding but so no they like uh, after... i gouge the bull right before the uh no, no. No. just like, curious yeah, uh was mad. that was that pb was that a pbr event it was not pbr okay. it was a, See, it was my, a double s event so my dad actually does the pyrotechnics for most pbr events oh okay i can't okay. i can't talk smack about pyrotechnics now i was gonna like, make oh, fun oh. Of, like... you know it's fine 
Just give uh, it, nope. give it all you got. No, 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 no. No, so <laughs> no, nope. don't want to yeah, drift into get, any uh, any territory here that we might. Yeah, uh, you yeah, get, you yeah, get, you gotta. He got pyrotechnics. Uh, we actually do the pyrotechnics for the University of Arkansas. The, and I'll, I'll guarantee stuff. yours are cooler than what was at the county fairgrounds in Yankton <laughs> County, South Dakota. The, uh, like, especially with the PBR. Run out there with you're, like you're, a couple you're, like uh, killer bee firecrackers and just like light them. <laughs> well, it was a little better than that. And you're like, See, oh, heck yeah. You're a true American. So we actually did something really cool. Um, Ooh, okay. Well, during the PBR, we had, uh, of course, I don't know anything about any of the PBR stuff. I know I like to watch the bull riding and it's super cool. Don't ask me again on that bull. I'll never do it. But uh, we, there's these uh, group of girls that were coming out with their American flags and just completely decked out in red, white, and blue. Oh yeah. And dad convinced the PBR manager that he wanted to do, um, uh, would he let him do uh, air burst over the top of them and all their, uh, 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 flags could have uh, sparks come out the top the entire time they ran okay. around the entire thing and they got it approved and it might have been one of the coolest things ever whenever wow. they were doing all the American you know this you know Amer- American song to the PBR oh, yeah. um, and and they ran out there with those horses as fast as they could and there were sparks flying American flags everywhere air bursts going off it was probably one of the coolest things I've seen uh, my dad do but it wasn't even in the cards he just wanted to do it so That's it's awesome. one of the cool so yeah I figured you'd enjoy that I ah, know that is dope that is great um I think the PBR was in Sioux Falls South Dakota I don't know okay three or four years ago or something like that but they didn't do anything crazy like that but yeah that that is awesome um. No, it was, it was what happened after the bull riding. Uh, of course, people like to uh, partake in a different kind of PBR when they go to a bull riding. So uh, there was a lot. <laughs> you get that? Yeah, see, Jimmy? See me get the joke. Uh, Jimmy, and goodness. <laughs> but uh, uh, after I dropped uh, my friends off, made sure they got home safely, I started driving home. And, you know, I, I can get a little impatient. You know, it's about a 30-minute drive uh, back to my house. So I, I might have been speeding, uh, may or may not have. Um, in town, uh, but lady cop goes ahead, pulls me over, um, had, had quite a bit of explaining to do as my insurance card was expired. My vehicle license plate was expired and, uh, I may or may not have been speeding. And then, uh, uh, just a quick context from the day before I was, uh, my cardio for the day was uh, punching the bag. So I was punching the bag. But when I put on the gloves at the gym, someone else had clearly used them before me. I don't have my own pair, uh, and they were disgusting and sweaty. So I'm uh, like, I'm not going to wear these. I'll just go. <clears throat> I'll just use my bare hands. Um, what's the worst that can happen? So uh, a few spots in my hands are kind of scabbed up right now. And so after my friends left, I, I took the Band-Aids off to let them air out. Uh, but they started bleeding again. So I've got like the hand that the officer can see is is kind of bloody, and they were like, "So, sir, uh, have you gotten any confrontations tonight or anything?" And I was like, "Oh, no, 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 no!" Wow. It, was, it was very uh, awkward explanation. It sounds like um, it sounds like a real pepper cricket setup. <laughs> <laughs> and if I knew, I was afraid. Um, I, I was really afraid he was going to say something that he was a she was a Facebook follower. So oh god, oh god, that might oh, have been that you worse. Father? But but well, sadly, yeah. I, I'm pretty. Boy, sure if I get it, you're full uh, for you. <laughs> this was completely a a pepper uh, cricket situation. Through no, but she did uh, walk back to her vehicle, and then I noticed another uh, car pulls up, and she must have thought I may have partaken in some other kind of PBRs and got maybe too rowdy that night and thought she uh, would have had a, a problem on her hands, someone who is maybe into, into fisticuffs and whatnot. But uh, no, I do actually, I don't actually mind getting pulled over because that'll probably be the first time someone asked me uh, how I'm doing that day. Uh, so I do, oh, I wow. do like that. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, oh man! But uh, but yeah, and then a, a nice conversation in in the police car, and you know, talking about the bull oh, riding and how they pulled over. The yep, uh, yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, and then uh, and then uh, talking about how they had already pulled over a few of the bull riders, which I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I can see it. Um, uh, after the nice conversation and $117 fine later, I was on my way back home. And 
it was pretty good. Yeah. But you know, they, they did they did ask me how my day was, so that was nice of them. Um, See, I always appreciate that. I once, Makes me I once real happy. A corner. What what I was told later was too quickly, and I was like, "Well, how do I? Was I speeding? No, I took a corner too quickly." And I was like, "Well, did I go out of my lane? Did I like? Did I what? What did I do? How do you take a corner too quickly without speeding, or like driving recklessly?" But he was like, "No, you you took the corner a little too quick back there." Um, asked me to get out of the vehicle, and then asked if I got any, if I had any weapons on me, and I was like, "Well, I've got my box cutter because at the time I was working at Menards, where I was legally required oh. by Menards to wear a box cutter That's right. at all times." So I was like, "I have my box cutter," and he holds out his hand like palm towards me, like the stop kind of signal. And then puts his other hand like on his gun that's in the holster. Ooh. And he's like, I'm going to ask Send you to in. put that back in the car. And I was like, my box cutter? <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do? Are you a have box? You not seen, what do you have you think seen these new happen? box yeah, cutters yeah. with guns on them? You haven't seen cops, have you? Uh, but yeah, yeah, so like I bad took boy, my box boys. cutter slowly out do. of my holster and put that's it away. A, and then, that's uh, a little different, so... He put Sorry, me in ahead, the back of the sure. cop car as well. Oh, in the back? They yeah. never put me in the back. No, I was in the front seat. I was not oh, in the back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I, get, I got put in the back people. and then oh, questioned. Wow. And I was like, I literally work like <laughs> two minutes from here. And I live two minutes from here. The max amount of like damage I could have done is five minutes away. And I promise you, like I did not. He was like, have you been drinking anything tonight? And I was like, Gatorade. And he didn't find that funny. <laughs> But yeah, I uh, yeah. See, they, they asked me the same question, obviously, and I was like, "Well, water, you know, gotta stay hydrated." No, out no, there. you're telling it's absolutely problem. nothing. I refuse to be hydrated. Oh, you can be like Eddie Hall. Any kind I'm very, of very, very, very dehydrated. Have you ever I've seen those? Like, eaten saltines, very dehydrated. And pretzel and cheese, <laughs> and that is all the things uh, that I have had tonight. That's what I uh, you tell them. I once, I once got pulled over and I wasn't aware of it. They didn't ask me if I had any weapons on them, uh, on myself, on my person. And I just started walking back to their car because they had asked me to. And they didn't say anything. They just like, stop. Uh, I guess they did say that. They said, stop. And then they ran up to me, grabbed my pocket knife out, and then threw it back through my car window. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my bad. Um, I was terrified because he just like ran up to me, grabbed it, and then like stop. threw it in my car window. <laughs> I was like, "Why? I swear I didn't do anything wrong." You know, I, like I put my hands behind my head, like instinctively, like, "Please don't." Judo throws you to the ground, <laughs> body slams me, oh, RKO's man. me, and then just like grabs the pocket knife, throws it out. Now, um, off topic no. from your Eddie Hall thing, did you guys hear that they canceled the fight? Eddie Hall had to quit. Or did he really? Match? Yeah, he tore his uh, bicep again. I follow Eddie his YouTube video, and he threw a hook and dis uh, completely detached his bicep in his right arm again. Why would he throw a hook? Why wouldn't he I mean, just he like, was... grab the guy and throw him into the stratosphere? Well, he's he's, he's going to be boxing. boxing. Thor. He was supposed to box he's, he's Thor. boxing four, so he's oh. got a yeah. Well, but Someone still, of very similar weight class he's, here. He's like slightly shorter and faster than Thor. He Eddie Hall is not slightly like... shorter. He's pretty short compared to Thor. Yeah, he's five yeah. two compared he's to five. Real uh, short. Sorry, sorry. Six two compared six. to uh, he's act, he's six two compared to uh, Thor's six ten. Six yeah. Ten, so. Yeah. But yep, yep. He won't be. He canceled that. I was hoping to go Dang. see it actually. Oh, really? In person? So, I, yeah, I, was I really enjoyed following the drama, but I was definitely never gonna like go and see, and see it. If you want the complete opposite of him, uh, I met Brian Shaw, and he's an incredible guy. Uh, another strongman competitor. That We're, are we saying the opposite of Thor? Because Thor seems like the no. The, so the yeah, Thor, Thor's guy. not fun. I, uh, yeah. Opposite of Eddie. Brian. Sh Brady Shaw, uh, Brian Shaw actually is in all of Eddie's videos. Sometimes he's the one he eggs he's on, and and yeah, it, it's it's hilarious. The one where they're wearing like the like the monk robes and they slap oh, each other is God. probably like the funniest now, video. Now, if you want to see the funniest video, I don't know if you watched it when they were filming uh, the the History Channel thing where they were doing feats, but in the behind the scenes, Eddie Hall they were playing around before filming and Brian has a video of it too. He grabs a 25 pound uh, medicine ball. Oh yes. And, yes. And chunks it at his head. It looks like, <laughs> and, and Brian Shaw actually bounces off his head. And it's the first time I've ever seen Eddie Hall literally go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As he runs around like a little girl. And I'm like, 
I was laughing so hard because I've never seen Eddie Hall break his character of this gruff, no yeah, take oh, no absolutely. crap yeah. guy. He's, yeah, like but <laughs> if he had thrown that at like any other human being, <laughs> he would oh, like took their head off, you know? Oh, like it, yeah. He, dude, hits a cameraman, he's gone. He's he's mm-hmm. gone with the medicine ball. It's a comedy where they Dead. just um, they I mean it's but it's <sighs> hilarious. No, I just got back from the dog park uh earlier this morning. Any number of people there, including myself, takes a medicine ball to the head, and that's like a death sentence. <laughs> that is not that is not like a you know I've uh, uh even <sighs> even like the big dude who has like the bigger dog uh what's his name duke beats i, I don't uh, think i i i, I think i out. myself i'm 295 pounds and i guarantee if that would have hit me in the head there's a good chance i'm on the ground knocked out That's i mean concussion. i mean yeah i'm not flexible I mean, enough my my neck does not bend in like the ways it should so yeah that's like a i mean instead of like i just a, saw ow. I mean, Brian Shaw at the time was 425 pounds. Let's say, how well do you think his neck can move around? Like, oh, the thing is like a tree trunk. To be fair, the, uh, the guy, he I would just hope bounced it. Mine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no, gosh. I could not um, do it. Uh, so, let's, uh, uh, Matt, what made you happy this week, my man? Oh, man. Uh, a lot of things happened. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go on the stressful side because it seems like. Everybody's yeah. wanting to do stressful stories. Yeah, uh, we're yeah. built. <laughs> what stressed you out this week, man? I, I uh, we are building a house, and so for the last, we just started construction this uh, last week, uh, as of Thursday, and so they're getting the house up, and and it's been stressful. Anyways, I'm excited for it because I'm seeing it being built. But as it's being built, I'm being reminded of all the things I got to get ready to put in it because I'm not doing a builder. I'm actually uh, building. Uh, getting all the people together and building it kind of myself. I'm kind of being the, uh, uh, the contractor on it. And so I'm just like excited to see it. But then as soon as I, I saw him get the, uh, the rafters up on it, I'm starting to go, Oh crap. I need tile. I need this, this, and this, but uh, it's one of those good stresses that, you know, kind of like, I guess Simeon where he gets stressed out by trying to get spark plugs and, gets to see the uh results my yeah. result will hopefully be a completed house in the next two or so months <laughs> but uh but other than that that's probably uh the stressful story uh that i and, and the other good story was is uh i actually got a call um earlier this week and uh, uh the group i i travel with the power team uh they uh they have been down for a long time due to covid uh we go into schools and do uh you know, prep rallies where we kind of do our motivational speaking and stuff. And we also go to churches and stuff like that and do feet like, streams. Don't do drugs and you crush a watermelon with your bare hands. So, like, yeah. It, it, hey. So, yeah, they're they're actually starting back up again. And so I uh, I got called and seen if I wanted to go down to uh, Florida. They had an event going on in the end of uh, this year. But, well, yeah, that's actually what we kind of do. We actually do a anti-drug, anti-alcohol, you know. Uh, right. uh, we, we actually talk to a lot of football teams. And uh, what we do to get their attention is uh, I, I actually – uh, I break bats over my head. I'll, uh, oh. I, cr- oh, no. I crush can't, I've done uh, soda cans. I've popped soda cans with my bare hands. I've actually ran my head through, uh, uh, five feet of ice and Genius. ran, th- I've actually, I've ran through, uh, five 10 feet, feet of ice, He's five feet. So, five so feet? yeah, feet of ice. So, um, what we do is, uh, we'll cut them into one foot sections and then you lay them down and you'll run your head through it. Um, and so I've done mm. that multiple times. And uh, mm. I, I've, so, you know, I, so I tell you what. You should do this before any Heroclix tournament. <laughs> you know, uh, if I was going to do something. Instantly, in... everyone would be like, at the very least, you'd make top four. Because everyone would just be like, eh, <laughs> don't want to deal with that. I think I think one of the things I could do at a venue is uh, I can rip uh, uh, a deck of cards into quarters. Like quarter size. Uh, so I can rip them four times. So one, well, sorry, it'd be three times. So one, and I can rip uh, each one of the halves into halves um, with my hands. Jeez. Wow. So, See, so, even that, like, the, um, so we, okay. at, at my work, we've been <laughs> installing new cables, and we went through 3M, and 3M decided to send us these instructions with every single packet of uh, 
hardware that they sent us. So we ended up with like 30 books, like not even a joke. These are, they're 30 books. We have at least 12 pages of, yeah. So like at least 12 pages are English. And then there's another, like at least 20 different languages. So I don't know what that adds up to, but there's a lot of pages and we've been trying the phone book thing because I mean, we're not exceptionally strong men there. Uh, but we, we are in a fairly physical environment where we have to like climb all day and stuff. And so, yeah, we've been trying like the phone book thing and, uh, so I, we, we can kind of get it, but it's only, I wouldn't even call this a phone book. Cause this is probably like three quarter inch thick. Whereas like a normal, like what I would consider like a, an impressive phone book is like an inch to like two inches kind of like thickness. So I have, uh, I've done two, uh, stacked together uh and ripped them in half that way uh of a 2000 so it'd be 4000 pages um i've done that at a venue uh that had a bigger uh phone book but uh no it's uh there's a couple things that would be pretty cool especially for uh a rowdy ranch and uh, wrestler that could do some pr- <laughs> I, I could actually probably teach you some really cool things cuz actually ripping a phone book is actually all technique it's actually really I it's all I okay. disagree because I feel like after trying to tear like you just so, said like a thousand pages after trying to tear like maybe 80 pages I so, feel like a lot of that it doesn't at uh, a certain me, point you have to be pretty strong because so a I'll, I'll tell times, you this like, yeah that's a lot so <laughs> there, the, the secret, uh, and this is uh, me, the the behind the behind the scenes. The secret really is in the way uh, you're tearing them, because you actually are trying to tear not a thousand at once, but you're wanting to tear individual pages going down a seam. It's it's hard to show, but I tell you what, if you guys ever come down in this area, I actually have some pretty cool things I could show you, especially uh, for your little persona type thing. Uh, yeah. If you ever wanted to try, but no, I've, I've done, uh, and, 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 and I don't want to make it sound like nothing's real. Cause, um, as much as I'd like to say that the baseball bats I've always broke are not real. Uh, uh there's a school in Canada that would, uh, disagree because I remember snapping one over my leg and because they're real bats, it splintered and the, the half that I had in my left hand snapped and because I had so much pressure, I actually put about three inches of it up into my bicep oh. as I came down. <laughs> and so mm. all of a sudden I'm in front of a whole bunch of kids and you know, you don't want to, if you freak out, so it's just going to make everybody in the audience freak out. Yeah. That's a problem so, for me. Cause I've got about two and a half inches total to my bicep. <laughs> so I now have a splinter going through the entirety of my your bicep. Arm. And uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't have these Hulk Hogan twenty-eight inch pythons. Uh, now, these, these are, uh, only twenty. I've all, I, I will say I only have twenty inches. I ain't that big. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not Scott Steiner with his actual twenty-four inch pythons. Oh yeah, no, no big Papa Pump. Yeah, yeah. That guy no, just deflecting half trees off of a. Uh... <laughs> no, I <laughs> for sure. If we ever go up to Tulsa. We'll definitely love to, yeah. bring Down. some camera stuff, and uh, we'll be like, all "I'd right, like to teach you." I, I can right, get both. The of, I guarantee you, Calder's going to put can, his uh, head okay. through it. <laughs> I okay. my three concussions are going to debate the fact whether or not I can put my head through anything. Uh, I I guarantee if you both showed up by the end of a probably thirty minute session, I could get you to tear a phone book. Okay. I would just, I, I just think it would be okay. hilarious to, uh, if we both showed up and you took us through like your normal, typical, like chest routine. Oh I yeah. Think that would yeah, be pretty uh, fun. Like that's, uh, at, the, that's at the same weight, you're like, all right, so like 10 reps of this. Well, we couldn't move it. I'd be like, I guess, ah, yes. can't move it. But you don't, uh, you don't get the choice. I've been, you have I've spotters been stuck that lifted off the bar and you're and like, we don't help time? you again. Until so, you lift it back up to the bar. Ten times. How how much okay, so here's the real question. What's everybody weigh in all reality? Right now uh, body, weight, body weight. I, I finished a dirty bulk and I put four inches on my stomach and a half inch on my arms, so I'm weighing about one ninety uh seven or something right now. 
That's actually yeah. Okay, yeah. 190, but you're also doing 225, so you're you're more than your body weight, which is a big deal. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a tight what, what, 155, but I've <laughs> I've topped out at 180 at one point, and that was like oh, full wow. bulk when I was like hitting the gym five days a week. I was at 180. Uh, I will say I hold I hold a lot of fat. Ago. I hold a lot of fat on my on my system on my frame here. Uh, oh, see, I'm now. Don't let anybody out there think I'm like this shredded guy. I have never been. Uh, except probably whenever I was in high school and I was 180 pounds. That's probably the first time. It was probably the last time I had abs was back then. But uh, I, I'm I'm weighing uh, in the winter. I try to hit about 295 is where I kind of stay at. And uh, I think uh, so. The last time before I tore, I actually tore my uh, pec minor uh, last year, uh, compete trying to get ready for a strongman. Uh, but, uh, I think my personal best was five ten on bench press <laughs> and, uh, uh, I did that in a so competition. That's nothing. I've, I've done half of that twice. So that's the same, right? I did like, I did two. So five ten. Okay. Not quite half. I did two twenty five twice. So that's almost the same, right? I mean, I, you got to think about this though. <laughs> There, there, there is a thing of how much I weigh. So if I'm weighing 300 pounds, but yet I'm doing this, you got to, I mean, I've also been working out for the last, oh gosh, since I'm 16. So this is about 14 years of working out, on okay. a, you know, pretty consistent I feel, basis. I feel slightly okay. better. Yeah. I've, got, so, I've only got uh, four I mean, years to catch up to you. I feel good. I feel good. I mean, oh. I, it's, it's literally <laughs> been, uh, to, to, I used to hate squatting and squatting has now become like my best lift. Like I, uh, in oh, yeah. the in the uh, uh, my competition, I actually uh, the most I ever squatted in our gym was uh, 650 pounds, most I ever done. Um, and I got to the competition, I hit 650, and I had two squats left, so I did 675 and got it, and I ended at 700, which I've never even thought I could do. And so I think it was just adrenaline and being in front of people, but uh, there, I, I mean, it, squats has definitely came a long way uh, from where. I used to be. I hated squats, but I will say, as I've gotten better at squats, uh, everything else has gotten better. It's kind of a that's not uh, what I ever want to hear. I'm sorry. Yeah. You, you said no, leg workout. Like, I, everything else started getting better after squats got better. I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah, you I lost me. I, I don't want to pretend like I'm any kind of fitness guru, but I I've found that like your your base, your core has to be as strong as like what you're what else you're doing so like squats definitely help and then deadlifts for me oh, were yeah. like the biggest like i could not bench more than my body weight for the longest time until i started deadlifting and then i was like able to do like twice almost three times like my body weight um for like prs and yeah like so like it it, it does like it's all like the same it all like interconnects depending on like how you're doing it. But squats for me were like the big changer. And then uh, deadlifts were for sure. Like the thing that I was like, Oh, like this is what has been missing from like my, my routine. Uh, so the... just in case, I don't want you guys to think I've just blown smoke, but I did post. Okay. Uh, um, this is only a 20 second video. This is four feet that I did at a church. And so the big biscuit, that, I like they that. Actually, I that actually I like. did not name. I, this was in New Jersey, <laughs> and I was from Arkansas. So for some reason, this thing <sighs> was what they gave me. <laughs> oh man! So uh, I, I I actually did a uh, an event where I did that I four times, and I felt <laughs> yeah. That they is... call me Big Biscuit because I like biscuits and gravy. So I, mean... I, I, I I guess that was the nickname that stuck for some reason, but. All right, went on a bulk. How many biscuits and gravy do you consume for breakfast? <laughs> Biscuit oh. per uh, ounce of gravy. What's what's it looking like? Or cup of gravy, so, maybe I should say. So I probably now I make it myself here at home whenever I do it, but I'll do a sausage gravy. And I did six biscuits, and I just kind of smother them. I don't. I mean, I've never counted calories, but I just smother oh, okay. them. With the, you know, a good a good good portion. I think it's two cups, and I probably use a cup. <laughs> of the gravy mix because I'm the only one that eats biscuits and gravy in the house pretty much. And so I'll eat that with uh, uh, probably six eggs every morning. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Wow. Dang. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of egg. 
Um, have you considered switching to duck eggs instead of chicken eggs? Because uh, I've never even heard. Why is that? I don't even know why. They're just slightly why. larger. <laughs> so like, oh, uh, the only reason Did I, I ask hear is about you and your duck eggs again here, Simeon, right now. Are you the only reason that, I ask is that an, is because I don't quite real thing enjoy that duck eggs, and uh, okay. I have multiple that I I'm, I need to oh, get gosh. rid of. Uh, no, I don't think I will. So <laughs> my problem with duck eggs. They're fine if you're cooking them into something or if you're, like, whisking them really, like, if you're making, like, scrambled eggs or omelet kind of thing. Really fatty? Uh, the the white, the yolk and, like, the white uh-huh. is very thick. So it's almost like a rubber consistency. Whereas, oh, I don't like, a like chicken this. egg is very thin and, like, I can... I can cut it with my fork and, and it's actually like, like easy it to eat, you mean? And like, yeah, a duck it. egg is, is like saying? rubbery. Okay. So it's quite close Ooh. to the consistency of, I don't, I don't even know what like would be close. It like, be a, like, an, like, would it be like doing a stupid oyster where it's like raw or something? Kind oh. of. Yeah. Like yeah. trying to cut oh. that with like a fork. It's oh, very that sounds terrible. thick. Oh, um, that sounds terrible. But if you whisk it into like a, a scramble, it's all right. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, what? you're not selling me. You're not selling me. <laughs> this is not it. Please come take my my duck eggs. Is what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> I have an abundance think, uh, of duck eggs. I yeah, you build them. I think a little a coop, a coop or a pen. Put some ducks and chickens in there. You know, you know what? And... It's because it's because I have this apple tree, and I, you know what? I didn't even say that's what made me happy, but um, <laughs> Jesus, dang! You happy. know what? <laughs> My apple tree made me way happier than whatever the other thing I said was. Changing spark plugs, boo. Uh, no, I planted an apple tree last week uh, from, like, bits of my apple that I actually got from, like, the store and ate. I I literally planted pieces of apple with seeds, and uh, there was nothing, nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, little tiny sprout... Um, I'll share I'll share the picture in like the Discord with you guys of what it looks like now, but I'll share day one and then day seven. And this thing like went from tiny little like is this even a plant to like holy cow, what is this dude doing? Because yeah, that that was pretty cool. Uh wait. I'm a You're sure? happy father of the tree now. Um It's not oh, like goodness. it's not several inches tall yet. But it is inches tall currently. <laughs> but yeah, good. I didn't right. mean to completely right. sidetrack we, everything. We <laughs> have. Were we not already pretty sidetracked? Uh, yeah, I think we've yeah. gone down a bad road. Yeah, I think I've talked like about Heroclix maybe half. So this is a this is a Heroclix podcast. In case anyone forgot, I, I might have to film an opening and say we talk about banter for forty minutes, and then this is when we start talking about Heroclix, like Mind Pump does, because. <laughs> Man, wow, that was that was good though. I, I heavily enjoyed it. Uh, anyways, so all we really have for news this week, I did compete in a tournament uh, this last weekend. Uh, but for HeroClix news, we have the tournament kit that is going to be coming out. Not really kit, I guess. I don't really know how to completely explain it. Um, but it's the Fantastic Four sure uh, constructed two month sealed uh, thing. So I'm just going to go ahead uh, read what we have written here now this was posted by what is it icv2 what is it I, yeah icv2 yeah. um i always Comics forget what these something v- yeah v- so movies, something um yeah. whiz kids is going to release a marvel hero who's fantastic Four 2021 uh play at home kit in october uh, Fantastic Four takes center stage in this Marvel Hero Click special at home storyline. The new kit is aimed at giving all players a chance to receive a Fantastic Four promotional figure, legacy card, or team up card, whether or not they can make it to an in store. Uh, each kit comes with a figure foil pack, so it's going to be a blind booster. Uh, with one figure in it, just like a gravity feed, uh, with one of the four never before clicked versions of the Fantastic Four. So Reed Richards Alpha, Captain Universe Invisible Woman, the Thing of Earth. Th- the Thing of Earth 13266 and Human Torch of the Uncanny and Humans. It also comes with a limited edition legacy card or team up card foil pack and a double sided uh, 24 by 36 map. It's going to be $10 just to play at home kit. Uh, a little bit more info. We do get to see some pictures. I had those up on Twitter of them. Uh, look really cool. It's going to be all the same sculpts and they are switch clicks from the Cosmic Clash starter set, but they're all, you know, painted a little a little differently. They look pretty neat. 
Uh, Reed Richards Alpha is a silver ring figure, so I'm curious to see what he might be doing, what he, what, what makes him so unique, so to say, you know? Um, but then we also get a look at a Doctor Doom and a Silver Surfer. Uh, it's like this um, very silver, um, but black instead of green cloak, Doctor Doom. Uh, and then we see the kind of a rainbow hue neon silver surfer, uh, which is really cool. So a little bit more info about those ones. Uh, the formal packs, legacy cards, let's see. But there are a number of items exclusive to the tournament kit. So th that's like the play at home one, right? You get the random figure and you get whatever, right? But the actual tournament kit that is like the um, venue one is going to include two Dr. Doom exclusive figures and one of these like Rainbow Silver Surfer exclusive figures and a set of the eight team up or legacy cards. I don't know why it says or maybe it's maybe there are eight team ups and then there's eight legacy cards, maybe or maybe there's four of each. I don't know. Uh, these items, along with extra foil packs, will be used for the grand prize pool as flex material. So. Fantastic Four are going to be like stuck in these foil packs and they're going to be random to see which one you get. So it kind of sucks if you're playing at home, you're going to have to buy multiples and it's going to be a random figure every time, which isn't great. Um, but if you get the tournament kit, you'll have a, you know, a better chance of getting these, these tournaments, right? So the suggested format for these events is a sealed four player mini tournament where each player will receive one legacy or team up foil pack for participating and earn more foil pack, the figure foil packs, or legacy team-up card packs, for winning rounds, and will accumulate points for a snake draft of the grand prize pool. The four-player mini tournaments will allow for maximum flexibility for stores running these events to make sure they can get plenty of players to participate. So I don't know what they mean by a four-player mini tournament if it's just a little round-robin type cube. So these four people versus those four people versus four, those four people. You know, if you have a store with more than just four people that show up. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, anyways, but then if you buy the real, like, not the play at home kit, but like the tournament kit that your venue, I assume, will order, you get the for sure a Silver Surfer grand prize and then two Doctor Dooms for like one for first, maybe one for second. They mention if you want to, you can give it out however you want a fellowship, flex prizing, whatever, you know. Yeah. So it seems like Doom it's gonna be is pretty the, cool. the like second place ish prize. Yeah. And silver surfer. Show your only any cards on it one. or anything? We no, we have no cards. We we just okay. have figures, sadly. Oh, so, yeah. oh, so they uh, showed even the figures what they look like? Yeah, we do. We have those up on the uh, Dial H Twitter. Um, they are oh, all okay. um, the same sculpts as the Cosmic Clash. Um, okay, just repainted, but okay. the repaints are quite unique compared to. The I mean, Cosmic that Doom Clash. is a cool sculpt to begin with. With him. Oh yeah, absolutely. Big old uh, thing and going up in the air. Surfer, you get to like see a, a few maps a weird here. Rainbow. Which I, like. I don't even. I don't even know what that's called. But that's it's that like weird rainbow it's, metallic. It's color. not like it's not really all the colors of a rainbow, but no. it's sort of like just some, yeah. yeah. It's that weird like oh, chromatic metal kind of color that yeah. they do every now and then on certain things. Um, yeah, the most I can tell from Surfer is that he's cosmic energy team ability and i think one lightning bolt and then doom the most i can tell is that i i don't think he's got two point values and he's got the uh doom team ability which makes sense yeah. but um, we uh we do get a look at some of these maps and these are i think they're all reprinted maps but the only one that i know for sure that is reprinted is going to be the first one i see which is the blue area of the moon map and then uh there's the latvarian village map uh, that is from, I believe, Earth X, or not Earth X, excuse me, Avengers versus X-Men, uh, which is one of my favorite maps to play on. It's pretty fun. It's got this big statue of Doom in the middle, uh, surrounded by a fountain. The other map we have here is uh, Realm of Death Indoor, which looks like a pain in the butt to play on. Uh, and then we have this very open uh, Honeymoon Resort map which is like a beach with a dock and a few different huts uh a little more open a lot of water not quite half the map is covered in water but it's pretty cool so some neat maps pretty sure they're reprints but uh they do look pretty cool so yeah i i did it uh but I this is gonna be yeah october so sealed most likely empire at least new uh um, yeah it appears all hindering on maps is now white and green checkered line 
like borders which is mm-hmm. yeah oh because obsc- isn't obscuring gone is that what they're trying to do yeah yeah that seems to be what they're doing like maybe they're feel combining like them into one helps people who have old maps that have obscuring on them be like oh yeah if it's white or if it's green it's hindering yeah. it's both the same oh, catch all maybe like the that. white makes it maybe the white brighter i don't know maybe sometimes I, I don't see all the green on the map sometimes it's hard to see to maybe that fair, white yeah. really the the red lines are also uh have white around them as well so it's like a red maybe line in the middle with two white borders I was gonna like say, for yeah, elevated if they're, if they're trying and to then help, uh, like it does look pretty cool the more it doesn't necessarily minded. look cool but uh, sometimes those maps get so jumbled up it's hard to see what the heck's on it yeah, you know especially now there is there is one thing on top of like grass so it does help like green yeah. on top of green being separated yeah. by like a bordered line does make sense there there is one thing i really like and that's they're not doing the numbered square in every single square of the map with oh, these that looked I ugly that, it, it looked so ugly. bad I know some people who are like, I'm going to move my share exchange to B5. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, nah, it's disgusting to look at. Those are terrible. Very happy they're gone. So that is that is the news this week, guys. What do you That's, what do you think? Are you guys going to compete in this? Excited for some sealed? Excited uh, um, to see what they can know, do? I'll definitely play in it, but I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm kind of over the Fantastic Four after the last Fast X. I'm kind of like the X-Men. You know, I was kind of. Wow. It seems like we, that's all we've been getting. I don't know. Wow. Over just, the don't Fantastic know. Four. Um, out of see, I came figures... in though whenever they started going, and <laughs> yeah. now it seems like I, I, I didn't get starved like you guys did, and I came in and they started pumping out I never the even Fantastic see, Four. See, like I, I've, I, I, I was, I was never starved here because I was, I was yeah. never hungry. The Fantastic Four. <laughs> I to played begin several with. Years Didn't have much of an appetite. I never felt like I really needed them. Like I had the fear itself thing and that was all like I really ever needed. Never really cared for Reed. I mean, at least like combatively. I was never like, ah oh, man, really wish I had smart stretchy man to help this team. Like never really cared for that. Uh, same with Johnny. I always felt like I had like a piece that could kind of do what Johnny did. So yeah. I had the fear itself thing. Never really needed the others. I would really like a super offensive Sue Storm that can, like, use force fields to cut things in half like she does in the comics. Like, she cuts a submarine in half with her force field. That seems really cool, well, and I'd like to see that. Um, she also Is there like, any submarine a, clicks uh, for her to do that, too? No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> We need some Not submarine yet. vehicles that she can cut in half. Those would she be also, so bad. She sends, like, a... <laughs> barrier like cylinder through a celestial's like hand as it's about to like shoot something she just like blows a like hole through its hand instead um kind of like iron man's repulsor blast except like she shoots like a laser thing through it and we've never gotten a clicks version of her that was similarly powered to that That's but like uh, strong like, she's like you know yeah, she's pretty brutal yeah yeah she is. wow she's like you know she's like green lantern except like doesn't have to make constructs. She's just like very simple. Like, what if instead of a machine gun to shoot you, I just separated like your head from your body, and then she yeah, does I, that, I, and you're like, oh man, that's that's pretty I'm, brutal. I'm actually surprised to hear because I like I said, I don't read too many comics at all, but I didn't. I always just assumed. I don't know from the movies. That's how I'm going off of the Fantastic Four movies. I was like, oh, this seems right. She can just make. You know, go invisible, yeah. make a force field. But to I've never fair, even heard of the. Yeah, to uh, be fair, um, <laughs> like Golden Silver Age, that was her thing. Like it wasn't until like <laughs> fairly recently, like mid two thousands, maybe like late nineties, where they okay. started like ramping making her, her power more of a, a little bit. Yeah, huh. making her like somewhat interesting. No, um, but to get back to Calder's question, I. I will try and collect one of each of the Fantastic Four, and then at the very least, I don't care so much for the Doom, at least right now. It'll depend on the dial, but I really want that Silver Surfer, and it sucks that he's like the quote-unquote grand prize. Yeah. That's going to be the piece that I really want to collect. I think the 
I think the God or no, not just the Doom. I think that's the only thing out of the sets I've been pretty excited about is all the oh yeah chase Dooms and Dooms and stuff like that. And uh, that that Latveria keyword is super good, surprisingly oh, yeah. good. Um, it's been, I mean, uh, like Morgan Le Fay adds, I think Avengers to Latveria. There's like there's a ton of stuff that adds to like Latveria, and then just I mean, Doom gosh, alone just, yeah. is really solid. That cosmic doom that, or whichever one that doom Nylane conqueror that gets to make past and warrior, or what was it past and something else? Past, future, cosmic, cosmic. I yeah, think all yeah, all Latverian. makes it all Latveria. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. I mean, that's I like the keyword cheating. I like that they're doing that. You know, I mean, yeah, Latveria is a crazy strong keyword right now. I mean, just looking at the. Um, yeah, uh, there was some kind of master mold, whatever, you know, tournament this past weekend as well. And just the probably four or five of the top eight were all like Latveria theme teams. Of course, different flavor of Latveria, sure. But uh, Latveria, nonetheless, that, oh, that keyword is uh, so strong. The Ohio no, it's not tournament, Wakefield. Right? I think it was, yeah, the Ohio one, yeah. Oh, okay. So was that the was. tournament? The one where... Is that the, the tournament you played in, Calder? The Phoenix uh, No, it's not. Almost okay. cheated to win, but somehow out of the top four, they sure do like to three, cheat a lot. Three Phoenix nesters, nesticles, if you will, uh, mm. in the top four managed to lose to a non Phoenix nesticle. Very interesting. I prefer That's more that. accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting, though. <laughs> uh, Anyways, uh, it so, seems like I don't know how so I feel about also, that nesticle. Uh, I don't know if anyone's been following this. But uh, at least if anyone outside of like the competitive has been following this, but it seems the the Wonder Woman uh, super rare flash has gone from like mid forty oh. to fifty dollars to yeah, almost a hundred dollars each. I sold mine too soon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so like we we mentioned this to me. back when Ian was on. The yep, podcast. that is true. <laughs> uh, when Ian was on the podcast, even when um Maddie G. Yes, Matt Gray. And, and I guess technically uh, also uh, Mr. No, Jack's no. Pizza Man None and of those guys George. Matter. Oh, no. Okay. No. Gotcha. No. Never mind. Literally just Matty G was the only creator okay. of the figure. But when, when he was on, we said, like, how does it feel to make, like, the most expensive super rare ev- probably ever, um, at least, like, from this set? And then I was like, you know what? Like, I think the Wonder Woman with the sword is outpacing it. But no, no. Mm-hmm. That no, not anymore. Yeah, has quite literally outpaced everything else in the set, like including some of the chases. Um, people are like willing to trade multiple chases and super rares and stuff for singular yeah. flashes because I had uh, ended up on so many lists. Guy on our venue traded his Dark Phoenix and um, another chase for a flash. I can't remember what flash. It was like a. a a flash from House of X, or a chase from House of X. I can't remember which one, but I was like, "God, you really wanted that flash if you gave away, you know, all that." I mean, Dark Phoenix, I think, is still going for at least seventy, isn't she? Yeah, Dark Phoenix is still no slouch. You can find that going for like, yeah, upwards of uh, sixty to ninety pretty easily. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And it will be like that until it rotates. It rotates. For sure. Uh, that's a a retaliator that. For thirty points, if you are running cosmic, does not make sense not to play. Um, it's just one of those like really solid, tiny, tiny point pieces. Even in like even in Silver Age, I don't know if Dark Phoenix will ever kind of like fully rotate, quote unquote rotate. Oh, because... well, now we have silver, don't we? So yeah. silver is yeah. going to be around. So now it's, I mean, at least got a little bit more life to it, right? Yeah, it'll. It'll be one of those things where I'll... So, Hero Clicks for me has gone from, like, selling all of my high meta competitive stuff to, at this point, it's like, sell all but one. So, it's like, I have two wind guards, but it's like, I will keep one wind guard, because once he hits silver, I will be interested in him still. Um, but, like, same with, like, ADW Hawkeye. I sold that as soon as it rotated, or, like, right before it rotated, with some mm-hmm. other Avengers stuff. And now I'm like, man, that Hawkeye, even though it's not as good as it used to be, 
still got like some like interesting options in silver now. So, yeah, I can't, I, I can't stand that wind guard. Oh, uh, I, uh, mm, yeah, well, don't know. Of... His last name. Eric, Eric Mullen. Is it Eric Mullen? Oh, Mulher. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so uh, he's down here and I played him a couple times. He's a real nice I, guy. Oh dude, he's an awesome guy, but yeah. I've played him five times. I played him twice at a States and it's been a variation of always having those two wind guards. I have yet to ever beat the guy. He's beat me out of every time I've ever played him. And I'm determined to one day take out that wind guard team so at some point. The only time but, I ever got uh, beat by a wind guard team was at a South Dakota States, I believe. I was running go. a 10 Wendigo triple tri sentinel <sighs> sheriff All that picture. team. Yep. And somebody, I can't remember who was running the wind guard team, but they just like they kind of ran out the really, clock on me on purpose. Really, like they, really strong, they just took really handsome, long turns, good jawline, and they just uh, they guy. took they, t- they took these turns that were so long that uh-huh. uh, didn't make uh-huh. any sense. Yeah, oh, you're talking they'd... about the train map. I remember seeing this video on YouTube. <laughs> oh, you think so? You <laughs> they think take so? so so long that yeah, like I yeah. eventually. Yeah. lost by points when I, I had uh-huh. a clear winning opportunity uh-huh. just <laughs> one turn away. Okay. Um, hey, okay. sometimes you got to play the game. Sometimes we'll, you got to play the clock. <laughs> Guess we'll never know who, who that person could have yeah. been. But, they, uh, they must have been really smart, though, and a real good player because they did win that A day, real mastermind. There real, can only uh, be one winner. Jason yeah. Wingard, if you would. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Yes, oh, his mastermind is his, his nickname. So, or it's, uh, AKA. No, Eric's team's actually really good, though. It's two wind guards with the Pharaoh and that DJ Doom. And, I mean, it doesn't seem like much, but when he pumps uh, out all those commissioners or the rookies, and, you know, he yeah. gets, he, I mean, you that, get a lot of people out there. Dude, that rookie pog is tough to beat. And I played a similar team like that. Michael Love didn't have a DJ Doom, but he had a uh, a third wind guard and that was annoying. Let me that yeah, Jason Wingard in in multiples is is tough to play against. It's just He's the free pog generation. I mean, it's it a power really action is. for a commissioner yeah. and uh, yep. Having yeah, but, yeah, man. facing off against like even just two wind guards and them being able to like because Isaac is still legal. They can still do like the Lord Gaia thing and yeah. double barrier you in. And then, yeah, all of a sudden, like they've got two. Uh, I, I, two I literally looked at my something. commissioner playing him because I was playing against him with a commissioner. I go, my commissioner stinks because I have the power action to do it. You just pumped out two of them. And now I mean, I'm getting that, that's, why, yeah, blast. that's why Jason was infinitely better than any bystander creator. <laughs> Like Stagron, um, mm-hmm. man, I, I don't know. Like anything hey, that had any kind of potential, Jason was just least, way better because he was just like, eh, I do it for At free. least you, you you can make it for 25 points, right? It's 50 points less. It's power action. And your rookie gets, you know, prob, you know? I, mean, I know it's not much of a consolation, but still. <laughs> but even, uh, what was it, uh, Dr. Richards, who makes like, Franklin Galactus. Dr. Dr. Fantastic. Like, that oh, was the team yeah. I ran uh, a, one what time a great in Tulsa. That was awesome. You know what would be better is if I had Jason Wingard to make your bystander for you. Be but sure. you had to have him on the map. You yeah, have you have to have, have him, him on the map. map. You have to have Dr. F on the map. So if he, if he wasn't on the map, the Pog just died right away. Now, I did play a double Jason team with Dr. Fantastic, and that was fun. Uh, that was really fun. I, I had a great time that day. Uh, didn't make top eight even, but it was still an <laughs> awesome, fun team. Like, and the yeah, rule keyword smashed, but I loved it. I was having a great time. Yeah, dude, it's such a great, it's such a great team. The ability to uh, just bring in even more Doom bots, a ridiculous amount of Doom bots, is amazing. Uh, I love it. And that was when Pulse Wave was good. You know, his twelve yeah. for five Pulse Wave could actually deal five damage last year, and that was it was pretty gnarly. But again, that risk you played was like Captain Marvel existed. You know, Valeria could still do her placement thing, and you could just kill like twenty defensive purpose doesn't mean anything. Yeah. When I can plink you for one pen, you know. So wait, which one do you think is better? Because I actually like the Joker mechanic better for p- pumping out Jokers over the Doom bots, but I don't know. Do you think I that... mean, that's that's a succeeding at shape change, right? Type of yeah. deal to make Joker. Yeah. 
This is any time a friendly character is targeted by an opponent's outwit, perplex, or prob. I think that's. Okay. I think I think you just get to pump out way more doom bots with with this mm -hmm. guy. I mean, obviously he's more yeah. expensive too, and gotcha. but like, I yeah, I I just think that way versus like them making attacks, they can make however many attacks in a turn. But you know, if they got outwit, perplex, or you know, if I'm making attacks, I can you know they they prob me when it's my turn, so I get an attacker on my turn, which feels great. You know, like I yeah, See, I I love I love Doctor F for that. I I had a the probably the most annoying team I ever played like I played against people was I did a I did not I think it was like four hundred points but I played uh six jokers some like five or four or so nuke clones and literally just wanted to jump on top of somebody and let them just blow up on them or just pump out more jokers and it was probably the most fun but obnoxious game for my opponents I ever did. And uh, I probably should never do that again. But it was a lot of fun <laughs> just having them, you know, willingly. I was like, please just hit me because I just want them all to start blowing up because they do damage yeah. to each other. Yeah. And it's it was pretty fun. But I don't know. I do. I do love that style of chain reaction. That's that so that cool. is pretty beautiful. It's yeah, when it, when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah it is. a team of uh, it was Borg Queen. At 100 points, and then I think it was like 300 point team. So the rest of the team I filled in with new clones because they deal penetrating damage. She has invincible top dial, and then she has the Borg team ability. So anytime an adjacent friendly character is KO'd, she gets to heal from it. So even if she wasn't on click one, she like would survive the new clones going off because of her healing ability. She'd but man, up. just oh like carrying, <laughs> carrying like eight nuke clones and being like, "Hey, you don't have any invincible. You're gonna take eight oh, no. damage when they all die." <laughs> uh, doing that to like an opposing character, it's not great. It's not a good way to like play because you're instantly oh, gonna so be fun, down though. a lot of points. But yeah, you're like, I can kill everything on your team if you don't move right now. <laughs> like, I mean, it's so much. It was fun. just. It was just fun, yeah, because, you know, it, and it was really annoying because no one wants to attack a Joker if they don't have an outwit to take out the, the shape change because all of a sudden you're pumping out another Joker and most times the other person you're going to try to hit is another Joker that could possibly hit a shape change when you have so many of them. And I don't know. It was fun pumping them out and letting them p blow up. And, yeah, I was giving away points, but it was fun whenever they're like, well, I really don't want to do that because everybody within – so many squares is about to take one penetrating damage. But like you said, if you got a reducer that actually does help you not get hit with penetrating damage, you're not as scared at all. Of, of yeah. It. What, uh, what's everybody thinking 300 modern, what their teams are looking like right now. I've got a master old event coming up this weekend. Simeon, I don't know if you're going to be able to, uh, I don't know if you're going to it or not, but uh, I've been messing around. Um... You know, I played Latveria at the Clicks Cup, and I do. You know, I enjoy it. I like it, but is it's, this uh, is, it, is, is your this... is your team the same that you played me, or did you change it up? Uh it. I don't know if I'm gonna play that. Honestly, I I understand how that team works, and I do like it. Um, so it would be the same team that I played against you, but also um, Josafa uh, from the Phoenix Nest. Uh, has been like running a team, but it's got you know it's got Red Lantern guy on it, and I'm just like, man, maybe that's what I should do. So his his team is like double flash, you know, TK charge, Guy Gardner, Sky Tyrant, Oz, Molecule Man, Jason, and then uh, whatever the I think Precision Strike Ring, and I would like in a heartbeat, I'd be like, yeah, I would play this team absolutely. Like it's just like a lot of good full map reach attackers, a little bit of defense, you know. Uh, no big colossals to have to carry around. Like, yeah, like I just dig like that. It's just like a bunch of good attackers. Good stuff is good type of deal. So I think I might want to run a team like that. I'm I'm bouncing between the Latveria team I ran um, or this team. You know, both are just solid. It themed? My, it's not themed. It's non theme. So okay. it's probably you know losing map most of the times. So it it can be a little rough. Uh, but even then, with only the plus three to map, like. It's it's such a minuscule difference uh, for map rolls nowadays. I mean, it doesn't guarantee you not getting it. So that's the yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, I, I honestly feel like 
the the non theme is not a bad idea or a bad play ever. Like nowadays, you know, maybe if you run an animal and you really want them six theme props, then yeah, of course, absolutely. I, I think that's the important part, you know. But this team has you know a prob with Flash and a great prob with Oz, so I wouldn't be totally worried about not having just like three one time use theme probs, you know. So like that's like you, that's where I'm kind of leaning. Yeah. Are you worried about the maggots? I maggot so teams. that's that's the one problem, right? Is I don't know anybody in my area that would run a maggot team. Okay. Um so like that's like the meta gaming where it's like I just don't think it'll be a problem. It might, it could, and that's where I would want to play, you know, all caps doom, you know. So like I would feel more comfortable with Latveria because I've already played it, I've practiced it, you know, enough, made top 16, right? Um, and then all caps doom does help shut down the amount of like actions a maggot like team can take, you know. So it means it means they move up and then they get two attacks and like that's it, yeah. you know, like that that I do that part I do like. So, um, but then also with this team, it has a farther reach than maggot, I think. So it could also be a non-issue, you know. And I've I haven't played, played against uh, the Mega team before, so I don't, I don't know. I've been playing around with that, uh, that Dew pool, the, the mixture of uh, Dupe and uh, Deadpool, and I just like the six range from him. I know it's not very far, but nothing can be placed within six of him, which stops the retaliators and it stops somebody carrying up a maggot. But it's seventy five points you're sinking into it, but it's also Yeah. Is it two stop clicks or is it three? I can't remember. I don't know. Uh Dupool has two stop clicks. Uh, yeah, I so think, he's yeah. still he's just annoying to fight him, I guess, but I don't know. I like the defensiveness about it, but I guess people keep telling me Valeria does the same thing, right? Or a or a Groot. Or uh, a, yeah. Or a with the Groot. with the placement um type of thing. Well they they really do the um after resolutions, like they'll be able to be placed and then they can still make their attack and everything. But after resolutions, they'll <coughs> they will take a pen. So if it's like a dark Phoenix, they wouldn't worry about it too much because they would probably plan on killing something if they so, do it. So if they just take one pen, whatever, they go back to their stop click with Valeria. So Valeria is not totally a counter to specifically dark Phoenix. Um, and like the Colossal will still get their attack off. Like yeah. Harry Harry Leland, yeah, he's just like can't be placed five square. You know, like he he puts a straight shutdown stop to it. You know, but that's yeah. all he does for fifty points, which is enough for some people. So you know, yeah. like sure. See, that's what uh, that's what Dupool does. He's got the cosmic energy and team player, and he um, with anybody within six can't be placed, so it stops anybody from retaliating. Yeah, and thankfully uh, this weekend there's no like rise and fall won't be legal. Uh, I honestly oh, am not no. looking say, forward to playing. Say uh, thankfully. I, I am thankful. I would I think much the rather really play a new rise, rise and fall, fall like a new rise and fall team, uh, either Emperor Gladiator with like Cosmic or Blackheart with uh, Hellfire, rather no. than I or Wonder Woman. No. Cause, cause yeah, like if I, I'm not sure if I'm playing this weekend or not, but if I do end up playing this weekend, it's gonna end up being. Ares uh, on like soldier theme, so it'll be like Ares, Spider Man seventeen to seventy six, double Marvella, like it, like it. and then four allied soldiers most likely, um, and then I've got fifteen points to spare for either equipment or whatever. But I feel like Ares, you have to start with some allied soldiers. Um, I'd I'd much rather have. A green lantern to carry the bystanders and the uh, the allied soldiers and German soldiers and whatever I end up creating, but in a three hundred modern setting, I feel like not only is it like a it's a solid mission point kind of tactic because if they do end up wiping your four allied soldiers, you're gonna be able to potentially stall them out, but if they don't. You've got Marvellas that have three range for four damage, and you have Spider Man seventeen seventy six who has four range for six damage, and they have Allied Soldiers that are all ten attack, five range for five damage. It's like real cheap, high damage stuff 
because of the amount of like damage increasing that you have. So I think it's Are you solid. trying to go off mission points? Is that what you're trying to do as a mission point victory? Or uh it it can be either. So it can be if your opponent isn't willing to engage you, you can straight up just send your allied soldiers to them and you have this high damage output. Like you don't have great stats, but you have tens for three, tens for five, somewhere in that range, uh, with five range. And that's just with the allied soldiers. Then you have two Marvellas that can barrier you in, and they also have empower if your opponent tries to close the gap. You still have that double plus two to damage because the two of those. They also have sidestep and flight to carry people if you need. And then you've got you, Spider-Man. Uh, what's up? Was it, did, didn't you say you have 15 points left? Yeah, there's 15 points left if you wanted to. So I'm not I like sure. Mary Jane. Yeah, I mean, might as well, right? I, I do Mary like James. the Mary Jane. The paparazzi is really solid. And even the, the crazy thing is on this team... Um, paparazzi i believe end up with like three damage so yeah so you could be like a 10 for three with your paparazzi who they only have two range but they're autonomous and sidestep so oh. if you position them correctly you could potentially do three damage with them or you could potentially just like you know in cap your opponent with an autonomous piece um oh, where's I always like putting those pogs. I mean, just the fact that she can do it through walls and everything. It's like you don't have oh, to have yeah. range or line of fire. It's just, or you have to, it has to be within four, but you don't have to have line of fire to the spot. It's just kind of ridiculous. Yeah. The only thing the team really is like lacks, in my opinion, is uh, positioning because you have to power action to move all of the allied soldiers, or you're going to have to use the Marvellas to carry. It's not great. But, um, if you're like carrying Spider-Man 1776 up and your opponent if your opponent moves within 6 of 1776 they're probably stuck with three actions so that like that at least helps you and just from playing the uh the weird little tournament that we me and Calder did um it takes quite a bit to KO a decent amount of allied soldiers or german soldiers um, I mean, how quick do you have to play? I mean, to get, I mean, it's gonna be fast, right? To personally, to like going? for so, like if I was going for only mission points, um, I have to bank on my opponent actually targeting allied soldiers because I'm I'm starting with four. Assuming my opponent like turn three kills all of my allied soldiers, I'm expecting at most turn six. So turn three, if they kill all of my allied soldiers, because that's like probably the turn where I'm putting them right up in their face and attacking with them. I'm getting, beginning of your it's turn, eight. every two endless war tokens, you get one mission point. So I'm only getting two mission points on turn four. So I'm definitely not winning by mission points okay. with this specific build. Uh, this is more of like a... Mission points are a thing if my opponent tries to stall, but it's more of like a just like allied soldiers for 20 points are very self sufficient with like five range, 10 for five. When I'm surrounded by another couple allied soldiers, I can run one up, make a 10 for two or like a 10 for three attack, and then run like the subsequent ones up and make you know, 10 for four, 10 for five kind of things. Um, and 1776 hmm. keeps my opponent from doing too many actions while also I like, that's the only perplex, but uh, no, as, as soon as X-Men rise and fall drops, I'll probably forget about Ares and I'll go to uh, sadly, I'll go to either Emperor Gladiator or Blackheart. I haven't decided which, well, Blackheart's not that good. You beat him with uh, terrible, uh, terrible <laughs> figures, and uh, Blackheart uh, yeah. didn't seem that great. It's <laughs> it's definitely um, must have yeah. a Hellfire Club guard. If Blackheart doesn't have any Hellfire Club guards, then it's pretty, he's pretty, pretty simple. He's pretty yeah, overconfident, <laughs> Um 
Yeah. No, I cut funny. deep. Thanks for so Simeon. I, I should tell you something really quick. So if we, we've all seen the video, we, we've all lived through the horror. Um, you know that I wasted every single theme prob on a breakaway roll. You'll be happy to know that this weekend I went undefeated until my final game against Lucas, oh, and nice. I I went for a charge with I believe it was Stone Cold. We were, this was our popper Save round. So cold. And oh, cool. right. I may or may not have wasted every <laughs> single theme prob on the breakaway roll, and I rolled a one oh, no. every single time. It hurt. He, it cut was deep. Was he going for the stunner? Was he going for uh, the he stunner? He was going for the full vehicular assault stunner. Oh, okay. This, uh, is, oh, this yeah. is the, uh, the main <sighs> set, Stone Cold. It cut, oh. it cut deep. It cut real oh. deep. Um, but yeah, like... If so only my, my drunken oh, clickstery episode was out and <laughs> you knew not to trust that stone cold, um, he will only oh, leave you sad. Uh, sad especially, especially in the final game. Uh, well, what I enjoy is that he can, he can stun and stun and stun and stun because he can just take one token off himself after resolutions. You know, like oh, that's sure. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great, you know, just constantly moving if he hits. If he hits, uh, yeah. If he, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, if he can move, if he can move, those are probably maybe. those are probably some of the coolest that came out. That was pretty excited whenever the WWE set came out. It, yeah. it brought back the good memories of the old WWE, seeing a Stone Cold Steve Austin and uh, all that stuff. So, yeah, you don't get to see that very uh, anymore. No, you certainly don't see much uh, WWE anything oh. anymore. It would seem. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I should have brought up that. Yeah. Now thing, right? <laughs> it's thing. This poor Sting. No. Yeah. Oh man. Poor Sting. Poor. Strangely, poor Bray Wyatt. Now. Uh, you'd yeah. think somebody that was upset about not seeing WWE Wave Two so much might be upset about I don't know something that's been in the works for about twenty years, like Half Life Three. Um, oh god. But just like mutant head crabs that will never see the light of Half Life <laughs> Three. Uh, well, we then they do Half Life Alex. Alex? They like, did an Alex game. They out. did do. They did do Alex. Uh, they they're did, very much yeah, scared of that VR, number three, though. Uh, yeah, there's there's been several Half Life kind of <laughs> games, um, and from kind what of. I've seen, internal workings say that Half Life Three has been ported from like console to console at this point. They've remade like the actual engine because it's been like so old. That like they had right? to like try and bring it up to like snuff to like modern day, and so at this point it's like you guys should have just left it like you you should have just launched it like PS3 era when it was like gonna be disappointing because there's no way it's not gonna be disappointing at this. They're point. they're printing money over there at Steam. They don't need your Half Life anything. <laughs> that's true. <sighs> they, they certainly don't want to update my favorite game of all time. Oh uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, story for another day. One. Uh, no, definitely not one. Definitely not Team TF Fortress Classic. The first. Uh, <laughs> nope. No hats included is what the, yeah. the title was. Oh, ouch! Uh, that that cut me deep. Oh. Cut me deep, Simeon. No, we're we're about a thousand something days, more than a thousand days. We're about three years since a major update. Maybe four years since a major update from Team Fortress Two. And what's what's the player base like on that game? I don't, uh, I don't think I've ever played it. Gosh, so, oh, dude, I love this game. I mean, I like it. Is this still got dedicated players? It actually, so we've had a pretty bad bot problem recently. Uh, with, uh, if you join a server, just, there's just tons of bots. It's bad. Um, you got to like talk to your team, like kick them. They, they sort of solved it a little bit, but there's still bots playing. So I like, uh, I like man versus machine where your opponents are bots and that you don't have a choice, uh, you know, where it's just actual literal robots versus uh, fake players that are like aimbot robots type of deal. So I do enjoy man versus machine as like this uh, call of duty zombies type way where it's like wave after wave of robots and you just build, you upgrade, you do whatever. Um, so like that was always my favorite game mode. Not so much the uh, player versus player, um, you know, deathmatch type control point capture the flag style stuff that was never really my biggest cup of tea but i did enjoy playing it um so yeah like player base is still pretty good i mean there's you know tens of thousands See, of players I'm, that still play like i'm i'm literally just hoping that halo infinite will just bring me some sort of reminder of whenever i was playing halo 2 and halo 3 when i was a kid if i could just yeah. have that one more time when this comes out and it, it, it's as good as everybody keeps saying it is i'll be See, pretty happy that was 
almost what Overwatch was for me. I love oh, okay. uh, love playing Overwatch, and I and I I've really soured on Overwatch now just because of how they've you know ran the like game. Abandoned, and didn't they? Like, didn't they ran, ran it into the ground. Yeah, um, like in uh, the player base is not as yeah. as enjoyable as the TF2 player base either. The community's rough, um, but I did for for the first couple like like a year or so of Overwatch. I heavily enjoyed playing it. We'll see, uh, we'll see if uh, Overwatch Two comes out with all their yeah. problems going on at their uh, <laughs> or, yikes, uh, yikes! Yeah. I don't know if I want to even support Blizzard honestly <laughs> no, nowadays. So it's bad. Like, it's so bad. Oh man. Uh, anyways, Hero Clicks. Uh, we Still better uh, get to some questions here. We're we're getting a little long in the tooth. There are dozens of us. Dozens. We got a few listener questions, Simeon. Uh, first, let's do an email. We got an email. People people do send us emails from time to time. It'll dial H for hero clicks at gmail.com. Uh, Andrew L- Elliott here says, Hello, gentlemen. I just want to say that last week's episode was truly hilarious. Uh, the one he's talking about is the uh, mutant head crab uh, that caused this last little side tangent here. <laughs> uh, he said, I also listened to the Scott Crampton podcast as well. I'm sorry to hear that, Andrew. Uh, and because of the recent statements he made, I have two questions for you, gentlemen, slash Jedi Legend, I suppose. First, if your opponent masterminds to a Mystic, uh, you still take damage to the Mystic's team ability. Yes, that is correct, yeah. because they become the hit character, Mystic's is Mastermind character. only shifts whether or not, like, which character was hit. So the character yeah. that has Mastermind power on them, if they were to be hit, they may choose to be Mastermind to another character, and that character becomes hit. So any applicable follow-ups... Uh, whether it's like Colossal Retaliation, Mystics, um, anything like that. De- defense Reducers, although uh, Super Senses doesn't like trigger, but like Defense Reducers do trigger. Um, yeah. Uh, the second one is when a team ability grants a standard power, is that standard power outwittable? Or would you need a character like Batman, God of Knowledge type of character that specifically gets her to team abilities? Uh, so yes, outwit is you outwit a uh, just any any power. So you, you can outwit a power a figure doesn't even have. They don't have to even possess that power to outwit it. So you can absolutely outwit powers uh, that are granted yeah. by team abilities. Same thing with like objects, with uh, uh, anything like that. Yeah, with characters like Industrial Spy and I can't remember the name of the scroll. The scroll hybrid from Avengers Assembled with characters oh, like yes, that. Oh, sure. yeah, Truly one gained, of the best figures ever made. You gain the uh, the powers that you outwitted. Um, you can literally outwit powers that aren't even <laughs> applicable because technically any character in Heroclix could have access to any power. So it could be someone like Black Widow and I could outwit Super Strength, <laughs> even though Black Widow never gains access to Super Strength on her dial. Um, you know, maybe she puts on the suit of sorrows or something. So, like, I can outwit it before that happens. I can outwit it. Just period. And uh, waste your yeah. outwit and do a WWE team ability or something. WWE team ability. Yeah. I can outwit sidestep or not sidestep. Uh, Was it nimble? Is the nimble? WWE yeah. version? Yeah. Um, flying leap, like anything like that. I can outwit any of those. And likewise, if it's given by a trait or a team ability like Stealth from Batman Ally or Super Senses from Wonder Woman, I can outwit those as well. Um, of course, I'm outwitting the standard power. Even though they have a special version, it will just straight up not allow them to use any version. So, yeah. Right. Uh, and then lastly, he goes on to say, um, I was also wondering what you guys believe is your favorite piece in modern right now. And then what you gentlemen think is the overall best piece in modern right now. I says casually thinks his favorite piece is the buy by the case Grodd. And he uh, just loves Grodd and the uh, Just League Unlimited Just League animated shows. So uh, Matt, we can start with you. What is what is just like your favorite piece in modern? And then what do you think is the overall best piece in modern? And I, I truly think I'm going to make this Deadpool work, but I could be just <laughs> dreaming that this actually works. But I told myself I will just run it as many events as I can until something comes out that makes it modern, uh, it. viable. So I'm going to say that cake Deadpool just because why not? I'll live and die by this sword. All right. I love it. 
Love it, man. Uh, then what do you think is the best? Are you saying he's the best one in modern, or is that your favorite? You know, I mean, he's. I don't think he's ever gonna. He's gonna need some support on his side, but okay. I think. I do think, after just getting beat with it so much, I mean, it's hard to define. Hard, Jason Wingard, just because it keeps beating me over and over again, I've never beat it. Is one that I would say is just like one of the best if you're going to do a ruler team or do uh, anything with his keywords. Yeah. If he's got it, I mean, he should go on the team. Yeah. Jason Wingard. With a whole bunch of bystanders. If you're planning on doing like a bystander heavy team, half the time it's better to use Jason than it's, whatever. It's, create, it's, a, like, it's, a, it's a switch army knife. I mean, anything. Yeah. You can have so many things on there to deal with whatever you may have. And some of those figures oh, may yeah. never get touched unless that that one time comes up. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's... Access to a TK, a barrier, a pulse wave. Um, I mean, yeah, literally everything. Like super strength, close combat oh, yeah. expert, pen damage. I mean, just having access to the rookie makes him <clears> really <throat> good. Having access to multiple characters with like either outwit or perplex or whatever like all of those things make him very versatile he's so good i don't want to play him because i just i despise it so much that it's so good yeah i don't even want one i don't even want one you see i i pulled one during pre-release i almost like sold him like right away oh. like oh, whatever you the know the crazy thing is he was going for quite like quite a like little less no he, he wasn't going for much it was people didn't See uh, Jean Grey and I don't even think there's another chase. I'm pretty sure it was just Jean so. Grey that people Duck were Jean caring about. Going nuts, yeah. And I don't, I don't know why he wasn't Wingard going for a lot, going but I remember quite a bit, like, quite he was only less. going for like 40 bucks, and I was like, ah, I'll just keep him if he's only going for 40 bucks. I think he's really good, and I want to try his, you know, bystander ability out, not in sealed because I lost that sealed. Is he did nothing? He sucked, you know. No bystanders, couldn't get the mind control to chain, just terrible garbage, you know. Um, and then, you know, I won a WKO with him, you know. You know? So I was like, yeah, that's yeah, kind of neat. So I'll just keep him around. And so I, I have sadly fallen so into the trap that I, I do quite enjoy. A Tendigo team? Okay, goodness gracious. Awesome. Two years ago, two uh, years ago. Oh, okay. You're not going to let it go? I didn't, I didn't quite hear You're not going to let said. it go? I remember at Worlds, everybody <laughs> said the two figures that were, if they were on the board, take them is... Uh, is the uh, G- uh, Dark Phoenix or the Jason Wingard had the me- most chance of being metal potential. So they were always like, that's the ones you want to get. Yeah, unless, absolutely. unless you get second place and there's a Dark Phoenix on the board and you're like, I'm never going to get that Dark Phoenix. And then they put a Superman Prime. Oh, that yes. Is. And so oh, the first place yeah. took that and I got the Dark Phoenix and I was happy. I was like, who cares? Yeah, I didn't yeah that it was Superman. always... Honestly, uh, Dark Phoenix. So Worlds 2019 was always... Superman Prime, number yeah. one, and then it would be uh, the Jean Grey Chase, the Wingard Chase, Dark Phoenix, su- or the Dark Phoenix Rare, and then uh, the Wendigo Rare. Those were always like my things, and I think the one time I had a Chase pulled in a battle royale was the Black King. Uh, whichever oh. one has like the real long dial and the the <laughs> rare colossal that we had was like Cyclops Sentinel and so I ended up getting second and I went with the supreme intelligence they set at our table which like, oh yes of granted, course. not worth a lot <laughs> but still worth more than like Cyclops Sentinel you know, or uh, Donald my, uh, Pierce my lack of actually like knowing the figures and everything going into it. Cause I was just, you know, just happy to be there. I, I, I can't believe how many people uh, were actually nice enough to say, that's the one you want to take, even though they weren't going to get it. Oh, right. Be like, be like, dude, you mm-hmm. really want to be taking that piece. It's going to be the one that's worse. Like how many times I would have never took the Wendigo just because I didn't know that mm. it was uh, going to be something as good as it was or understand why it was so good. I knew people were winning with it, you know, doing crazy things with the wounded tokens, but I didn't understand it. And they're like, uh, you're coming up next. And I was like, I don't know what to take. It's like, if I was me, I would take that, take this one. And I was like, yeah, pretty surprised that people weren't greedy and be like, Hey, you know, steer you wrong or something like that. So they could get something kind of players, 
they, they really are just like a different breed of like nice people. Like I know Simeon and I were playing a battle royale, and this this the, the lady who won was like, I'm gonna take the figure I won with, which was like the the uncommon like oh, the blue yeah. phoenix. You and know, we and we were like, like uh, you might no, not want to do that. Like, please yeah. don't. Yeah, like I, it, I it, it almost like hurts that, yeah. you seeing someone grab the figure that's like you know just not the most expensive figure first. Even though like sure oh. that means you could and, potentially get it, yeah, but you're like was, no, you should really not. Yeah, it yeah. was like hey, um, you see that green tab on that figure? That means no one wants it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, kind well, of. Like, pretty the much. other thing is like. Uh, that phoenix it was like you could as like player number one or like uh you know coming out like number one in a battle royal you could probably pass on an uncommon colossal pick whatever your top pick was and still have access to picking that uncommon colossal later just because of how much like stuff they were dropping in 2019 all right. Um, I, I, I've just I've just seen people be pretty cutthroat in other things and being like oh, yeah. pretty cool about it was actually well, kind of refreshing. Well, to be fair, uh, gameplay in battle royals can be a lot more. Oh yeah. Than oh yeah. Than like if you if you win and they're talking to you later. Um, <laughs> I learned that in nationals when uh, I pulled like I pulled trash. One of my opponents got a chase. One got a super air, and like the best I got was the the uncommon hulk or like the common hulk whatever it was the 125 point hulk dude um, smart smart hulk huh and uh, yeah everyone teamed up against it and i was like but he's got a super rare that does the same like amount of damage this guy's got a super rare that's got like mind control outwit whatever and this guy's got a chase and they're like yeah but no one likes hulk and i was like cool that was the one good piece i got so thank you um, I guess I will use my trash stuff now. Uh, See, I came out with the. Uh, I kept I kept pulling Exodus, and I still didn't understand. Like I I literally couldn't wrap my head around like how big do I want the? Because you choose at the beginning of the game how oh, big yeah. you want your circle, and every time I chose, he's like, "That's a bold move." I was choosing like the really small one, and he's like, "I I think you want it to be a, like in between." Uh, the middle one. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I have no idea how to play this character. I'm just trying to figure it out. And I could never get that character to work. I never knew if I wanted it to be really long range, stopping somebody, or if I wanted it short range. And uh, that guy's still. I don't. Th- I don't like decisions like that in the beginning of the game, especially when you have so many people trying to figure out what you're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, Exodus is really cool because um, of that, but. So um, let's, uh, we're really good at tangents this episode, yeah, guys. Back uh, to the so original question. A character that I think, what was it, underrated that I'm, I'm like rooting for? Just, you no, know, just your favorite, just your favorite, and then what you think is the best. So one that I'm, I'm really like a fan of, and I don't think is getting nearly enough credit or play is Marquis of Death. Not only is it because of the, so I, I played it here casually on thursday got him up to five uh false hope tokens which would mean a five damage pulse wave with five range but also just being able to heal uh friendly characters from 10 range away being able to energy explode potentially deal opposing characters damage while also healing hit friendly characters one instead um that is huge for sixty points, having TK or for sixty points having prob that works at ten range, um, having energy explosion that's ten range, two lightning bolts, and then having a stop click, I feel like is really solid. And I feel like we just have not seen enough play from him. His only keyword is cosmic, but yeah, that's about. And then uh, my meta figure that I really want to build around that I'm waiting to build around is going to be once. X Men Rise and Fall drops. I'll probably be putting that uh, Marquis of Death on a team with Emperor Gladiator, and I haven't decided yet if I'm going to put Emperor Gladiator at 100 points or 50. But I feel like at 100 points, he's just pumping out a ton of damage, like an absolute ton of damage. Uh, plus, he has a 15 square reach on his own, and if you add a TK to that, it becomes a 21 square reach. 
if you add Mr. Oz to that, it's 23 squares. So he's pretty good. Pretty good. So wait, is that the prime one or is that the uh Yeah, the prime Emperor Gladiator. Not okay, the conf- confidence token one. Right. The normal okay. Gladiator is really solid as well. Um, I just much much more prefer like the one where I know what his starting stats are than trying to work up towards that. Okay. Right on. So, I think... I mean, my, my favorite is, is easily is Guy Gardner. Like, there's no way it couldn't be. Like, Red Lantern guy is just... Needed new one. Love to see it. He's awesome. I was able to pull it off. Hopefully, try to pull, you know, his big Quake thing off more. I just love the power. It's great. The chainsaw's dope. Um, but I think the best figure in Modern is probably Professor X. I think it's... I think it's got to be just allowing Swapping. X-Men swap is just too strong. I That's why I'm just dreading Rise and Fall being legal, because I think that just it completely changes the, the format of the game. The edge you get being able to swap into into good figures, like no offense to Fantastic Four, yeah. but they were all very niche. Like they Not were good, sure. Key but, were cheating with Illuminati or Shi'ar. But yeah, yeah. Purely just more, the X-Men ability. Even just, yeah, even just X-Men. But, like, yeah, obviously, because, like, we were saying Emperor Gladiator, yeah, he's great. And now instead of having to just absolutely I have to play him or whatever, he's on my sideline if I want to play him. You know, I can smoke whatever I need to to make it fit, you know. Like, Illuminati, not really. But, like, X-Men has so much going for it right now, especially with the fact that, you know, there's four X-Men sets in Modern. There's going to be, like, you know four and a third because empire is going to have a pretty heavy x-men sub theme like it's just what what he does if, if you're not playing swap you are instantly at a disadvantage against yeah. that team same with uh think... magneto because magneto has the huge um i mean it's mostly hellfire already has it's, a yeah really it's mostly hellfire figures but you the can only problem with magneto is to it. he doesn't quite have as much to pull from that's why I'm giving it to Professor X. But I do think they are both very strong yeah. in their own ways. I'm I think just Brotherhood's got a swapping. solid amount. But... The swapping just... I, oh. I just can't stand the swapping because of the time it takes. It seems like... Oh, yeah. Giving somebody the opportunity to make these decisions as the game is set up... It's I, annoying. I, when it's, it, it's different it, if you're I, like, I'm swapping out Kitty Pride for so-and-so because then I get yeah. the Lockheed Bystander and like... Because there were Fantastic Four teams, like the Wife Swap, Sue Storm thing, where uh, yeah. there were teams that were basically, I only had this character main force, so I get the bystander at the beginning of the game, and then I can swap it out. But this is a completely different thing, where I could have nine... I could actually see myself having nine different X-Men characters... And looking through them, yeah, like the sideline and be like trying to do the math, trying to figure out, be like, oh, man, like they've got a lot of pen damage. I'm going to need some reducers. I'm going to need some like this or that. I need more barrier and like looking through my characters and like figuring out because clearly I'm going to have an idea of what I want the team to look like. But I just oh, I'm just glad it's not during like when the time has started no at least it's yeah. a, you have to do because lord you could just spend you could eat up 10 minutes just trying to figure oh, out yeah. what you're swapping to and Easily making sure easy. it's right i mean yeah like between fantastic four uh x-men brotherhood and dooms um <laughs> there's a whole lot of beginning of game swapping going on uh, which yeah. is why I, I believe what's the new mechanic that's coming out? Um, rally? It is not rally, you know, but well, the... rally. Well, rally's sa- part salvage. of salvage. Uh, yeah, we have rally, salvage, uh, recruiter, recruiter. The one that we really thought was going to be like the same kind of like keyword cheat, and it turns out that it's not. It's like a. It's just kind of bad. It's it's like a weird Krakoan revival thing. Is what it is. Uh, uh, oh, great. It's like an ID Love card that. version of Krakoan Revival, but it's uh, once again, your sideline will matter depending on the teams you play <laughs> because uh, 
man. Wizards and and no, your sideline will side. not matter because allies exist. That is definitely not anything important to your sideline at all in yeah. most cases. Allies. Sorry, HT Realms user, whatever your name was, <laughs> allies are not that important to your sideline. About zero percent important uh, to your sideline nine times out of ten. Swappable characters. Uh, Sentinels now, you'll have to have like a you know, on your side. Trouble there. alerts, troublemakers, Jason Wingard, yeah. bystander. Not only figures. do I need yeah, trouble alerts, troublemakers, but why would I not put a Sentinel on my sideline? Like, I mean, I with it on X Men teams, it. well, well, maybe because he's kind of bad. It, but if they hit me three times in one turn, twice, I, I get it's only to three make times. It. Well, it's three times it's only unless it's an X Men. Oh, yeah, three times. Yeah, twice. three times for X Men. Yeah, but yeah. All of a sudden, I've got an 11 for 2 with two lightning bolts. I mean, yeah. With yeah, but he's in your starting area. A, yeah, but he's on not, like a team with allied soldiers or something, you know, he can instantly be an 11 for 5 with six range, two lightning bolts. Sure. I mean, it just depends on the team, but like, why would I not have it on my sideline just in case I want whatever that is bringing to the table? Yeah. Because you'll forget about it, like I did every time I did during my field. <laughs> oh, I had no. it on my field. I'm just over here, like, yeah. oh. I absolutely forgot oh. about it. Sidelined um, the entire first game that I played. My opponent hit me like multiple times each turn, and I was like, oh, I could have brought a sentinel in. And then it was like next turn, and I was like, oh, I could have done it. And then it was like the very last turn, I brought it in, and it didn't matter because time was called. Yeah. I, I forget sideline almost instantly. As soon as the game starts, I forget about trouble alerts and all that stuff. It's gone. Ooh, not good. Not good. I mean, it's annoying when people are like, oop, that's one missed attack. You know, like <laughs> it can be a bit much when they like, constantly do that every single turn. But it, hey guys, it can swing a it. game. Yeah. Like, all right. <laughs> I know. Your dice suck. We get it, bro. Um, but it, like, once again, like a Black Vulcan and stuff like that really can swing a game. So. It is. Oh, yeah. It oh. is important for like a mental note, at least. Uh, anyways, well, let's go ahead. We're gonna jump over to Discord here. Uh, we got uh, good old Bill says, "Will patrons ever get to hear an unedited, unedited episode of the show?" Honestly, we don't edit the show that much. Um, yeah. An unedited version is you like a little more ums and ahs and like yeah. awkward spacing. Like that's all an unedited is. Lie. We don't like you say any crazy hot hear... takes that you miss. <laughs> You will get to hear um, some pre-show banter, but as far as an unedited episode, nobody wants that. I guarantee you, no. it's not like yeah. it's not like nobody wants that. Like, oh, Calder said something like really, really strange or like really off the wall. It's like no, it's like Simeon took two minutes to remember the name of a type of candy bar he had five years ago. And so you just listen to two years of silence while he goes uh, two years of silence, uh, or or you get a uh, Simeon coming in screaming about Punisher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, just stuff you don't want to hear. Um, yeah, and I don't mean that as like like too saucy. You don't want to hear it. I mean that like <laughs> quite ah. literally just silent. Boring Real saucy stuff over here at Dial H no for one wants to listen through. Um, however, if you yeah, if you forget. do want to listen to a pre-edited episode, I'll share a an edited version and a unedited version so that you can tell. Like, oh wow, yeah, there is just a lot of dead silence sometimes that really is boring. Uh, yeah, but no, we do have a ton of pre-episode recordings. Um, I just got a almost three hour recording of the, uh, what was it? Bad Sam. Yeah. The we bad Sam recording from, uh, today I got about three hours of recording from that without anyone's consent. So we do have things yep. like that, that totally can go up to the <laughs> Patreon at some point. Did, uh, didn't make them sign a waiver. No, Come no, on. no. They are, I'm they so are glad. in our Discord on their own free will, and uh, I will record them at my own free discretion <laughs> because of I'm that. glad. I'm glad Bad Sam was not a part of today because I would have been 
blanked out on any figure that you might be oh, even alluding to. Yeah, not gonna lie, I kind of forgot that we were, we could have done that, but no, I'm glad you didn't. Oh, okay, so, oh, okay, because <laughs> you know, it would have been bad. I would have literally been blank on half the guesses I would have to have. Shoot, uh, I'm sorry, listener. Uh, weren't able to do it, but that's all right. If although I will say one thing, you should do bad Sam and Patreon just because we normally end up talking a good. Like Simi said, we talked for three hours. Maybe not. We're not always talking oh, for yeah. three hours, but uh, we do have some pretty fun discussion. Uh, oh, the, no. We we go pretty deep into the Dial H for Hero Cl- Clicks lore, as well as uh, as much Pepper into Cricket the lore. Donnie Pepper Cricket lore we could get. We went quite <laughs> hard into that today. We really did, uh, which was pretty funny. So I'm yeah, have to, I'll have to check it out. Uh, so definitely, uh, and for those those listening who don't know, uh, Dial H for Hero Clicks has Patreon. That's right. You can support the show like Matt does, like Chance does, like good old Lucas Superfan Tom Van Holland does. Yeah. Uh, All Star, what a guy. Never listened to an episode, Tom Van Holland. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it's great. Hey, if he can give us money he doesn't listen to the show, you guys actually listen. You could give us a dollar or two. Yeah, that, uh, that's a win-win. That's a, yeah, that's a right? Patreon member that doesn't doesn't know you're talking bad about him. And Ex- you're exactly. Money from him. exactly. And, and I'll say that. I'm like, yeah, man, hey, we were talking some mad uh, mad smack about you on the show. And he's like, cool. I didn't hear it. And I'm like, all right, well, hey, yeah, whatever. <laughs> he, didn't, well, he, listen, didn't, but... he, he didn't get three hours into it. That's the problem. Yeah, That's right. That's right. Yeah. He's well, on a much worse podcast that much fewer people bad. listen to so uh, yeah. statistically <laughs> speaking you correct might hear lucas but it won't be on this show that's true uh but yeah if you guys want to join the patreon there's a link in the description below uh m- a lot of it goes to help our youtube if you want to see more extreme rules if you want to see more uh live action gameplay it really helps us out there as well as we give away some pretty sick tokens those slice of cake tokens uh for deadpool just finished making uh allied bystanders and german bystanders for Ares. the germans are billion clicks bruce soldiers and then the allies are the allied ranch hands which would be myself in our extreme rules uh gear so those are pretty fun uh, on the flip side of those we have the supergirl infection token and then the sky tyrant reincarnation token for all those that play sky tyrant you're gonna need you need these tokens, uh, as Absolutely. well as we have a ton of rise and fall tokens. Like we have research, mimicry, the Shi'ar flag, the confidence tokens, and then, like I said, the uh, the cake and goodie bag tokens. So, ton of great tokens. You, if you join any of those tiers of Patreon, we also have these awesome stickers that are like old battlefield conditions and feats, but have little standout moments from the Dial H. Uh, YouTube channel uh, put on there, so it's pretty funny uh, to check those out. So, big big plug to just say, join the Patreon. We have a good time, you know, playing Bad Sam every week. I want to start doing battle royales whenever I can finally get that organized, um, and maybe even film those, put them on the YouTube channel. I think it'd be really fun. So, uh, anyways, uh, next up to the questions, Luke 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 says, sculpt reuse. It is a thing. Uh, super rares becoming rares, commons becoming super rares. What are three older sculpts, say pre dialon card, that you would like to see reused in an upcoming set with a new paint and scale implied simian? What are three pre dial sculpts? This is uncanny X Men and older that you would like to see reused. Uncanny X Men and older. I thought pre dial meant like, or I thought it was pre carded that he was talking about. Pre-dial on the card is what he said. Oh, pre-dial on the card. Well, that makes it a little bit easier. So, um, number one would be from Justice League Trinity War. Good old Mazaz. And so, I need this character redone. I need a legacy card to re-point cost him because he's 210 points. But man, oh man, what a great sculpt. I have no idea who this character is, but he's got this giant effect coming out of his chest it's shazam backwards um alexander no luther senior so it's uh lex luther's dad apparently uh but yeah it's it's a really cool sculpt it's a really cool dial design when he KOs an opposing character he gets to gain a standard power that character possessed it's one of those characters that i play whenever we're like playing like a real high point game if it's like six to seven hundred points I'll throw a Mazaz in there, because if he can get one KO, then he's worth his points. Um, and it's also just a really fun, really cool sculpt. Um, 
Next up would be we're digging all the way back to Hammer of Thor. And this is the Ultron yep. from Hammer of Thor. So this is completely based on the sculpt. So it was a super rare from the set, but he's got his big old cape. He's got like the it's a futuristic Ultron kind of look to him. Um, he has a 12 range with one lightning bolt charge with uh, pulse wave, 12 speed charge, 12 attack pulse wave, four damage, and then later on his dial, mid dial, he has a uh, special mind control, and he takes no damage from mind control if his target has the armor or robot keyword, which now he just takes no damage because that's how mind control works. But for 174 points, it'd be really cool to reuse this sculpt. It's a really solid Ultron sculpt. And to be honest, we don't get a ton of really solid ones. Um, but this is like, that's one of my favorites because it just looks very imposing, I suppose, is like the best way to say it. And then uh, last but not least, I'd really like to get a reuse of the Mr. Mixoplatic, the super air from Superman and Wonder Woman. That's uh, definitely not how you say it, but okay. Mixoplatic. Nah, I, I'm pretty sure they said Mixius Spitlick. Like you're mixing a bowl, you wow. spit and lick. Mixius oh. Spitlick. Wow. I think you that's think, how it is. You think a fifth dimension imp would pronounce his name as if you're mixing a bowl of Spitlick? That's how you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. This creature I'm that is saying, infinitely. That is how more... somebody explained it to me one time. Wow. And it's yeah, not legal well, was that person All right. from the fifth dimension? Because if not, obviously not, Simeon. Uh, yeah, from I didn't Earth. think so. <laughs> I'm gonna, Mr. I gonna Mix up up here. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, just a really fun sculpt. <laughs> That's he's it. A, he's he's a crazy character, and he's a really fun sculpt. Okay. <laughs> Matt, what are what are three figures? <laughs> oh, gosh, that you, know, you think we'd like to see resculpted? Or not even have... resculpted, but they're sculpts uh, brought in the future here. See, I only have like a few, and one of the Hulks I have is that Battle World one with the red bottom to it. I think it's got like a three hundred twenty-five point line. Uh, it's Avengers I think it's Assemble. A... Yes, yes, the red oh, one. Yeah, the, okay. The, and yeah. Uh, he's got so he's, the, he's got uh, all the blood stains from being eaten on from the yeah uh, the the bugs. So, the book. Yeah, so uh, I think I think he would be really cool if he got a size like with the new size, and uh, I like the sculpt. I think with the detail that they're able to do now, oh, uh, absolutely. With the newer stuff, I think he would look a lot cooler. You know, right now he's okay, but I think all the Hulks that you know that can get uh, the actual size, uh, you know, bigger, just gives them more detail. It seems like uh, I mean, just comparing any of these new sets compared to uh, some of the older ones the, I, I, I was one of the few people that like really, really liked the size uh, increase just because yeah. everything just felt bigger. And I mean, uh, to be fair, they the... if they redid an Avengers assemble chase set, like as a starter or like fast forces, Ooh. if they redid those like in like the newer sculpt style, I would 100% buy all those. It, I mean, I think, for most I, chase sets, that's true. But yeah. Avengers Assembles was yeah. like, there was only two of those chases that I did not care that much about. Well, okay, Otherwise, let me guess. Let me guess. All really let me guess. Cool. Goliath was one of them that you didn't care about, right? <laughs> wow. You, you nailed then, it. <laughs> Goliath. <laughs> and then uh, I'll say, even though the sculpt is awesome, the figure was lackluster. So I'll say that Iron Man. No, it's actually oh, Black Widow. No, it's actually really. So it's a it's a figure that a ton of people love, but I just wow. absolutely cared zero about Rick Jones. Four? Rick uh, Jones. Yeah. No. I loved, wow. I loved the wow. the classic Steve Yo. Rogers Iron Man I King mean. Thor Hulk, and even Black Widow. It was Rick Jones and Goliath that I was like You're Rick Jones bag. just looked stupid to You're me. You're a human scumbag. <laughs> but think how you look. If he was bigger, yeah. And what if updated. his hands? What if his hands didn't look like fish people hands and they were? 
Wow. I guess I've never seen this sculpt. <laughs> He's like I guess really I... channeling Namor through his sculpt with his <laughs> red fingers. You know what? You know what? I, uh, I think I'm with you now. I don't like this guy either. No, I don't, I don't no, idea. no. Rick Jones I've is never, awesome. I've never seen him. Now, now I'm on the fence. I'm not sure I'm going to do him now. He, Wow, he does so dial wise. Rick Jones does slap yeah, way awesome. harder he is than awesome. Uh, yeah, most of the others. You know why he slaps really hard, Simeon? Well, He's got those big fish hands. Yeah, you got the fish, fish hands. hands. Yeah, fish hands. hands. Uh, <laughs> you about the, you about the <laughs> smell what the Rick Jones is cooking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, like I, I could totally see a redo of almost every chase set from the last like five years. There's so many really solid chases. Um, Hulk out heroes being probably would be my biggest oh yeah. choice. For Hulk out heroes. Good, definitely you know? the, uh, the pantheon of sins who, who oh, is more actually. iconic in DC than uh, sloth pride uh, greed. So, you know, everyone loves those. Everyone's like a huge, uh, Marvel's fan in DC. So they're like, man, so, can't wait for Billy Batson to fight those. I was given, uh, somebody traded me and he gave me some old hero clicks that I haven't, I was kind of just looking at my shelf and I got this duo peanut base sculpt of Colossus and Wolverine from him. And oh, yeah. I don't know where it's from. It's just, uh, he's at 190 points. <laughs> But he's actually got a really cool sculpt too. Uh, it's like a duo figure looking thing. But uh, he's got his hands on Xavier Institute's like a uh, remainder of the school or something under Rebel. And I was just kind of looking at him and how the older figures I've seen, it would be kind of cool. All right. If they're going to be popping out X Men, you know, you might as well make say, something cool. I, I want to say that's from giant size x-men but i they really didn't do a ton of duo bases like it was surprisingly uh a short amount of time where they did duo bases um especially like i don't even they did understand the bases mechanics. for a while but uh it was yeah giant size x-men would have been colossus wolverine where they're doing the he's on his arm like i think he's doing special. the cannonball yeah yeah, fat, yeah. Yeah, then that's the same set where the the cable Deadpool and the uh, oh yeah, yeah yeah Cyclops Phoenix Gambit Rogue you had those those were the four sets of duo figures, um, and then I guess uh, technically on Peanut bases were the Horsemen of Apocalypse because those were on Peanuts, but um, much less cool in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I was just kind of sitting here and I was looking at it and it's like, you know, out of some of the older figures, it's actually got quite a bit of detail since it's bigger anyways. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, it's an actual thing. It's like an actual scene from a comic that they okay. made into a sculpt. Cool. So, yeah, for sure. Was that all three? Sorry about that. I got interrupted. Uh, well, I, I think, I think uh, that's about all I could come up with, honestly, okay. for, for me. Uh, real quick, I'll just I'll just throw out mine. Uh, the Hammer of Thor, Captain America sculpt. Would love to see that a little bit bigger. You know, all that. Just to me, it's such a beautiful, iconic sculpt that I just love. I just love that sculpt, man. It, it is it is awesome. Uh, to kind of go off like the duo figures and the peanut base thing. If we got a new Avengers Prime, you know, Cap Thor, Iron Man, like all together like, doing that that'd be amazing i would love that too and uh you know I'm, i might be it might be once again sounding a little biased here but uh i would like to see cap and ice um it's not necessarily like a great sculpt but i want to see the mechanic of removable uh things on the sculpt like come back and i liked the countdown click mechanic a lot uh i would like to see like kind of the way they did it with the Spider-Man instead of countdown clicks, he just starts the game with tokens and you remove them every turn seems to be what they would rather do than have countdown clicks nowadays. But I would still like to see a cap in ice, uh, removable sculpt It'd be really, really cool. So next up we had from good old El Presidente who said, of course, this is Chance McCall. Do you think the price barrier is the biggest obstacle to growing Heroclix? 
It seems like every other game, even starting later, later outpaces clicks within a few months. I've seen this at multiple venues. Hard or soft tacos? Why does Simeon appear so friendly but conducts in more audio surveillance than the U.S. government? And why does Calder refuse to rematch me if there is a central city cop on my team? So tackling the first one, uh, do you think the price barrier is the biggest obstacle to growing hero clicks? So as like a casual game, no, because I can literally give people enough old figures that they can play for, I would say, years before getting bored. Um, and likewise, if you were to buy stuff offline, I think for probably like 50 bucks. You could probably probably buy enough Golden Age stuff to not be bored for quite a while. Um, now, if you are looking at it like from a booster price obstacle, yes, five figures for fifteen dollars MSRP is rough. It's real rough. Like that. That's when I started the game. The reason why I almost never bought Gravity Feeds were they were three dollars per pack. Or like three ninety nine per pack, depending on where you were, and that was way too much for a single pack for me. That just seemed like crazy that I'd spend that much for a single figure, and now it's fifteen dollars for five figures, which comes out to three dollars per figure in the pack, and that is real hard to be like, yeah, uh, three of these commons are worth three dollars. Like that just seems real like a real big obstacle to come overcome. Uh, mm. I don't really know any other games that would have like some sort of price point that overcomes this or is like worth less than this or whatever. I feel like most games are going to be quite a bit cheaper, but honestly, I have no idea which games outside of magic competitive magic teams are going to be pretty big. And then if you're going to get really big into something like Warhammer, it'll set like you back a little ways when you build an entire army for Warhammer kind of thing. Um, but just generally on the surface, Hero Clicks, I think, is cheap enough to get into. I don't think it's super uh, expensive, but yeah. I think it's hard for them to get that price point down any further than what it is just because they're paying for an IP that's got a, you know, quite a bit of pull on how popular they are. So oh, absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, like when you're, you're spending money you're towards an IP like Marvel, getting their character license with a uh, literal like <laughs> Superman, Batman, like the the most famous characters in the world, uh, outranking the likes of uh, like Mahatma Gandhi and uh, I don't know. President Bill Clinton, um, people what? recognize what? Superman <laughs> and Batman. I'm just fan saying, of Arkansas, like, huh? Recognizably Arkansas? wise, <laughs> Our governor, like, you know, across the, left, the world, the people know who Batman and Superman are, even if they've never even like read a book in English. <laughs> you know, um, these very yeah. English characters, very like Americanized characters are like worldwide famous and so yeah they it's surprising at some point that like this. we get them for so cheap sometimes i i just don't see this game being any more uh it's, it's got to be cheaper than playing magic for sure i mean well, absolutely i mean a magic team like the lowest a card would probably be in a deck average is like ten dollars you know just for a filler card would be at least five and then like well, I to mean, be competitive yeah, with not, it, it's expensive. not including lands because I think lands yeah. are pretty much like gimmies. But um, well, not those, but sure. But like, it's crazy expensive to play Magic compared to this game. This is this is nothing, really. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, when you got a card that's going for hundreds of thousand dollars, like a I don't know what they call that, Black Lotus or something. I mean, I oh, don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, nothing. I mean, I, I'm I've been pretty blessed with having a full-time job and owning a company so spending two hundred dollars on a deadpool doesn't seem that bad especially when i hear like 
I don't know, like Pokemon carbs and all this stuff going for. Oh yeah. Yeah, like ridiculous amount. Like I could never afford a like these. What like, you're not Charles gonna buy Mars my <laughs> my Super DX Gigantamax yeah. Max Pikachu for three thousand yeah, dollars? Yeah, the fat Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 good. I'd I'm rather so, have the cool figure. <laughs> I'm so removed from Pokemon that I don't even understand what I don't even know what Gigantamax is, other than it makes the card really expensive. Yeah, I mean, and I like I said for I anyone listening, I I also don't care. So please don't message me and tell <laughs> me what the difference is. But yeah, uh, but you know they still have to make that piece of plastic. So I mean, there's a lot of manufacturing and design and time yeah. and labor that goes into each one of those characters as much as they do seem to uh, i mean sculpt reuse hasn't been a factor for me because i mean so far everyone that's come out has been new to me other people in our venue of course say oh i've seen this one in this set but i never did back in so. my day yeah. <laughs> super rare whatever yeah oh, like. well, the seventh time i've seen this havoc sculpt beautiful <laughs> Uh, but truly, yeah. they've used that havoc sculpt like seven times. I mean, I think the only one I've I've noticed that seems to be kind of like a common one. It seems like if they do like a very generic some nobody that's just holding a book or something, or I don't know. It always seems like there's one that all kind of have a very similar look to them. That's like a you know common or something like that, or a generic. So, but. They still change it up a little bit. His hands in a different spot most times. Mm. You know, they change it Beautiful. up a little bit. Beautiful. Nathan, uh, El Presidente. Is this what we're talking about? Is this what we're on, Simeon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are. We are hard or soft shell tacos. Is that uh, the incredibly important yeah. question? So, well, first we were on. Uh, do you think the price barrier is the biggest obstacle? I don't think that's the biggest obstacle. I think it's. Um, to be honest, Turning I think a new it's game. mostly. <laughs> the lack of I you know and like a lot of people have said like oh it's not like advertising blah 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 but I truly think no one even hears about hero clicks I think if we like made it like a banger and we just like you know made everyone at least aware of like the game cuz like if you say oh like so and so plays magic even if you've never been in a comic shop and you hear like oh like your coworker plays magic you'll probably have some sort of inclination of what it is. You'll be yeah, like, you'll, oh, you'll know they're a loser. It's a game called Magic. Uh, if someone says, like, oh, like, so-and-so plays Hero Clicks, you'll be like, I have zero clue what any of those words just meant. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't think that's the biggest obstacle. I think it could be a obstacle, just not the biggest one. Um, but, yeah. Hoft, okay, hard right or soft shell tacos or hoft shell soft. tacos. Hoft shell, all hoft the way. Hoft shell tacos. Uh, I'm always going to go soft, and if I have the option, I'll never go to a Taco Bell. If the good, good man, if it's good man. Taco oh. Bell is not food. It's not real food. It's disgusting. Oh, <laughs> it's the Garbage. most disgusting thing ever. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Finally. Okay. Finally, <laughs> a man of culture. I see. Yes. Yeah. Wow, you don't like your ground beef being uh, some sort of like mystery paste? Fine. Yeah, it, no, it's, it, is, not. it is absolutely mystery paste. I guess and you that cannot means tell me otherwise. The rest of us. <laughs> I've drank your water, and it does not. You know, it doesn't surprise me that you like Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, you did. You drank the fluoride water, and now your mind belongs to us. <laughs> I think the only fast food I will actually pull in and get something from is probably a uh, Wendy's. I think they uh, actually make a pretty again, good burger. Another man of culture, I see. Yeah. I had Wendy's yesterday. Good guy. I, good I guy. actually <laughs> truly truly do enjoy a Wendy's. Um, they have one of the, the best Baconator, burgers. I think it is. But Baconator, like, yeah. I, can't. I could do like four Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers quite easily oh. before That's I too much bread. Baconator. Well, no. No, like I, I don't do all the bread. It's got to be like one you giant stack peel, of you, junior you peel them off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one He's giant cheap. stack of junior baconators. Well, the burgers isn't that are so just small, a... I can just slide them right into my mouth. It's like I they don't need even... to make a. I always just get the the burger, uh, three stack. You know, what is it the triple? 
I mean, that's the, that's, yeah. that's all you need. The triple baconator. Eventually, it's my no, mouth we're not baconator. I I do I'm not like, do that baconator. You don't uh, like the baconator, really? No, I actually, I, you know, Burger King I, used to do a quad stacker. Uh, I think they got sued because multiple people were dying from it. But... My jaw doesn't open. Doesn't uh, just, yeah, yeah. No, you gotta you gotta turn into a snake and just unhinge yeah. that jaw. The Serbian <laughs> society not... loved it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad See, we answered we... all those questions on top of yeah, the, the ones they yeah. Yep. Uh, I also go with soft taco. Um, I am just I. I feel like I pack whatever I'm putting into a taco way too much. Like I either put way too much beef or jalapeno or whatever cheese in hard shell tacos are very unforgiving when you try and pack yeah. way more in. So All it's always out, soft yeah. shell with me. Uh, it's always ends up being like some sort of makeshift burrito. It's less of a taco, but it's always soft shell. So yeah, that's a good, that's a good choice right there. I like I like this one. Uh, why does Simeon appear so friendly, but conducts in more audio surveillance than the U.S. government? Wow. So wait, well, I need to know the backstory of this. What, what does this mean? Yeah, what, I, oh, I, I too need to know. I don't understand. Uh, it's not like I <laughs> really? have probably three uh, uninterrupted hours of Chance McCall on record uh, speaking about different things <laughs> or uh, that's definitely not the listeners that may not know at home uh as soon as we start an episode just simeon just starts recording you know so we've got a lot of banter uh saved up <laughs> um but it doesn't matter if we have a guest on it doesn't matter if we are in a public chat with somebody uh, on discord who didn't know we were doing an episode or not, if even if we aren't doing episode he will he'll re he records almost every conversation i think i've ever, uh, had ever okay so it's true. Um, now I see. And we, and we can edit this out if we want to edit this whole segment out, so we don't true, call no. out Simeon so uh, hard and look I a little have... like a black sheep here. <laughs> no, I'm I'm fine with everyone knowing this, so they have been fairly warned. Uh, now, my... now, make sure, make sure you send in your my consent form that I got to sign. <laughs> That's you know, right. My, my lawyer will be in touch. You've with now all legally been, been informed on, that if you talk yeah, to this, Simeon, this you're being your recorded. And only oh. legal information. That you <laughs> Dang, are verbal signing of a contract with Simeon? Yeah. Yep. Uh, by, by downloading oh. this episode, you are agreeing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> by downloading the Dang. By reading you're this stuck. comic. Hey, you better hope you don't have auto download turned to on. Be, huh? uh, haunted by well, but no, I. I recorded about three hours of Bad Sam earlier with uh, five of our patrons. Um, and, you know, if, if they want to say something disparaging towards someone else, and then perhaps I accidentally leak said something else to that said someone. Um, Isn't that just uh, more reason to join the Patreon so yeah, that doesn't that, get I mean, out? Just, you know, that, that's, just, that's just life. And, you know, maybe said someone <laughs> like... Uh, a certain Johnny Pepper Cricket deserves said God. something, or uh, you know, a, a a particular. Uh, let's see here, what what is this person's? Uh, just <laughs> Otaku from Twitter. Oh yeah, perhaps right. deserves to be put on blast uh, in our patron. Uh, but no. Uh, no. If you, you don't seem patron, like that, I, you'd never I'd be that kind of person. At some point, even. Even good old Scott Porter, I oh, have God. audio files saved for him because he dared speak in the same Discord as me. The fool <laughs> that <laughs> Scott Porter speaking in the same Discord. Oh, no. Are you about to cancel Scott Porter? <laughs> no. I, no, he I, didn't say anything I, ridiculous, uh, sadly. That we um, know of. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in the future it'll be looking Scott back Porter, oh, ridiculous, but uh... dude, uh, okay, just a random Scott Porter story. <laughs> My wife has always laughed at me for playing this game because she's like, "Well, I can collect these little figures," and I just so happened to see Scott Porter was on her little what is that stupid show? He's on a whole bunch of shows, I guess, that she watches. And I go, "Well, that guy right there plays it, and you think he's cute and whatnot." And it's like, no, he doesn't, <laughs> and I was like. Hold on, let me pull up the thing. And I yes, pulled up one of the unopening. Yes, you know, it's like a, yes, he does. You can't, you can't pull up the uh, the YouTube videos. You have to pull up the um, 
what was it? The whose line the is rap. it anyway? Where yes, he, the rap. Yes, it. yeah, with Wayne Brady. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, the 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 whose line is it anyway? Uh, Scott Porter and Wayne Brady rap. So they've yeah, like been uh, co-workers or like I w- I wouldn't say best friends, but they've they've worked together before. So um, Wayne Brady, of course, being just like ridiculously good with coming up with like music off. Oh, the wait, he played head. it. So did he play it too? Yeah. Wayne Brady played. Uh, oh no, Wayne Brady doesn't play Hero Clicks, but he he okay. was aware that Scott did. Um, oh. So yeah, like the segment was, uh, it was like, I can't remember even. It, they hmm. had to make a song and like a boy band kind of beat. And yeah, between Scott and Wayne Brady, they made a a Hero Clicks rap kind of thing. Oh. But hmm. yeah. It's pretty fun. I'm gonna have to watch it. I'm gonna watch that. Yeah, just for the. I'm gonna make her watch it too. It's a lot more fun in the, uh, podcast than podcast description below. That's for sure. I'm not gonna lie. I, I watched the Netflix trailer for that show, and then I was like, "Yeah, I don't think I want to watch this show." It's Which one. Oh, is that another Georgia? Georgia. Is it another of those? Uh, if it's another one of those like you've done before, I, I I can't remember what show it was. It's very drama heavy stuff. Yeah. I don't get into it. it. Chance's last question is, why does Calder refuse to rematch me if there's a Central City uh, cop on the team? Uh, this, this goes back to my Florida trip back in January. Uh, Chance and I played a little sealed. I, I played from the original Deadpool set, and I pulled Tiamat, who was a beast back then. Every time yeah. he hit with an attack, he'd remove a token from him or something like that. He was a beast. But uh, somehow... The Central City Police Officer with Enhancement and PD absolutely annihilated the rest of my team. Just It was the right amount of of stuff he needed to just take out Tiamat and everything else I pulled. Uh, and yeah, I, I was like, wow, that was clearly the winner. And Chance, Chance probably doesn't even own him. In fact, I actually have the Central City cop. <laughs> Chance, uh, being the humble person he is, signed the card in front of me, handed it to me and said, here you go, champ. Oh, uh... wow. Thanks. You Appreciate it. He just asserted his dominance when, all yeah, over. Chance becomes governor of the underwater uh, principality of Florida. I think that card will be worth money. Because mm. clearly, by Maybe. by the time Chance becomes like uh, politically active, Florida will be one hundred percent Atlantis underwater. Um, I agree. But you know what? I agree. All the all the Crocs and the Gators will probably not take like the salt water very well. So it's a good no. chance. But, but, I mean, there's, it'll but be a nice but, water world. But they're, uh, they're salt water Crocs. So, I mean, uh, yeah, those ones will survive for sure. <laughs> okay. So he's like, yeah, I knew those. Were good. I knew <laughs> those were good. Yeah. Yeah. Salt water. Are those called, Sharks? Is that what those are called? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Of I course. I'm a marine <laughs> uh, enthusiast. Is You'd be a marine I, biologist I, if no, uh, was your profession. Uh, not biologist, no? enthusiast. Yep. Uh, I watched, you know, it's not your profession. Blue it's a hobby. With uh, Samuel Jackson, so I'm pretty sure I know a thing or two because I've seen <laughs> a thing or two. I'm tired of these sharks. Bum, 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 bum. All right, uh, Alex the Enchanter goes on to say. Who do you consider to be the biggest mad scientist of hero clicks? Crazy, uh, you know, team builds to maybe the most success. I think uh, I can't really think of anybody besides PJ Bolin. I mean, oh. when it when it comes to Golden, and I, you know, I, I hate to bring up someone who is on that podcast again, bleh, but uh, it's actually a pretty funny show. I don't, I don't know why we're so hard on it, but uh, like. It? I don't know. I, I stopped listening after okay, the one host yeah. left. If I'm being real, I don't know. I don't listen, know this funny because I, I feel like I've listened I, uh... more than. <laughs> to be fair, when's the I, last uh, time yeah. PJ was on Critical Clip? I don't know, honestly. Um, but anyways, PJ is a really good uh, <laughs> team builder in Golden. He can really break uh, Golden Age. He will even lose with the team every single match, and they'll still ban the figure in the format. That's just how good he is at building teams, I guess, uh, where even if you I lose, you like, still get banned. Uh, so, so I don't would know. Would you consider Lex Luthor like a mad scientist? No, he's I, too smart. I feel like he's not PJ's mad. like the Lex Luthor. He's, no, where, he's... Like, he's 
He wouldn't he's, be mad, I guess. Yeah, he's a very I mean, intelligent builder, and he can outbuild. Lexus are just had his own, you know, no, it dogma could be the, agenda and everything going on. I think the Lex Luthor from the uh, cinematic universe seems pretty mad. Oh, Jesse oh, yeah, Eisenberg yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. killed a Jolly Rancher and stuck it in a grown man's mouth. He peed in a I mean, jar well, and then blew up the Senate. There you like, go. Yeah, there's, your, there's your mad scientist one. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a mad scientist. <laughs> I, okay, I also so we're gonna feel like we're gonna say PJ Bowling, Jesse Eisenberg. Well, I feel like that's the PJ Bowling style. No, um, it's just no, yellow was, Gatorade. I mean, that's all. It he's is. got he's got quite a few jars of so, that kilt. I hear that's why he can play nonstop for hours. I was thinking about this question. And I was like, like, what? Who do I? What do I consider like a mad scientist? Because like, Simeon wants to say himself. Do I he play no. like Jay and three tri sentinels one that time? That would involve me considering myself a scientist, and I, I do not. I consider myself more of like an engineer of destruction. Okay. Uh, oh no, yeah, um, I don't, yeah. Engineers are scientists too. It's okay. <laughs> Oh, are sort of. they then? Uh, kind so of. you're saying Bill Nye, the science guy, is indeed a science guy? Uh, he actually, he actually engineer. has a degree in engineering, wow. but no science degrees wow. technically. So he so is actually is an he engineer, a science not actually guy a science or an guy. guy. Is he a mad scientist? Technically, or an technically, Tell because me. he thinks he's a scientist, he's probably a mad scientist. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, Ooh. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. All all the all the Bill Nye stands are just gonna light me up now i'm okay with that i never watched him as a kid i was i was a bob roth guy to be fair you get a, if, a if you want to nice really know the difference guys. i don't a, think so <laughs> a scientist is just like a generic term an engineer is like an applied physics term that happens to be science i'm about to like, apply the physics so of a baseball it's bat literally just your head unless you get to your point physics science <laughs> being like performed it's just a scientist Bill Nye is indeed a scientist of physics. Answer Alex's yeah. question. Answer yeah. the question. Uh, so, oh. so to get Please. into Alex's question, uh, when I think of mad scientists, I think of like the you know the famous ones. So like Frankenstein. So Frankenstein oh brought gosh. a dead body back to life. So who's somebody that brought a like a dead team back to life? Who's somebody that took a a team that was that was dead and should have stayed buried and brought it back to the forefront and people started and all I can think of is Brad Broyles with his dirty Krakoan revival rotting maggot team and by rotting maggot team <laughs> okay. I mean literally like undead maggot X-Men team that he made into a you know and I'm not going to say like uh, I'm not going to say Tyler Spee's copied the build because that was an animal theme team that just used maggot and i think maggot's just an extremely impressive character and i think krakoan revival always had the opportunity to work with a extremely busted character and i think maggot just happened to be like the character that was extremely cheap and busted for that kind of format but that being said yeah i, I feel like uh maggot and Krakoan Revival yeah. and uh, like literally X Men theme team kind of stuff. I think that's pretty mad sciencey because no one else did that. No one else even was trying, you know. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Matt, you got a, a mad scientist team builder that comes to mind, or? I mean, the only person is going to be a local guy, uh, Spencer. Uh, he just, I always make fun of him because he's. I swear he. If you get him an idea, it's like he looks up in the sky and he goes into his Hero Clicks archives and figures out a team. Like I, I like I don't know all these characters like he does, but somehow I could be like, man, I really just need a TK at for around fifty points, and he would just like all of a sudden he just like shelled in on the uh, the Big Bang Theory, and he just goes into his mind. Oh, and he becomes he, incredibly he, annoying. <laughs> oh, wow, he knows Tyler. everything. Wow. Wow. You just don't like Big Bang Theory? Wow. What's wrong with you? Calder, not only oh, I, a, a I unfan of scientists, like it, also an unfan of Big Bangs. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that probably I, 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 can't, I can't have ca caffeine anymore, so I don't, don't do a lot of Big Bangs anymore. So oh. trying to drink more water, it's better for the heart, you know, palpitations and oh. whatnot. I'll uh, drink a bazinga to that. Okay. Mm. 
I hate, I hate you. Uh, we got a few more questions here, if I can uh, lift through them. Uh, Andy goes on to say, is robot a legit keyword for meta without master mold? I think so, yeah, because it actually has been showing up quite a bit in the meta. Stupid, uh, uh, what are those without stupid master mold. Danger room constructs, man. Yeah. They're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, so I, I actually answered this question before I realized it was a uh, pod qu- yeah. podcast question. But yeah, um, at double mention, um, Isaac Denke, uh, I think won South Dakota States in 2020 with a robot theme team. He did, and yeah. to be fair, uh, Penny Parker was on the team, making it technically a uh, Spider-Man family theme team. But even disregarding that, like in 2020, robot theme teams could have access to triple perplex, triple uh, don't die tech or anti, like, you know, very little damage taken kind of stuff. Uh, Mr. Sinister with his outwit combined with like poison and plasticity and like all the stuff he does. Um, Magneto with his pen damage, Sabretooth with his just like flurry like being able to do double attacks and like crazy stuff like that um just on the surface there's a ton of stuff going on and then that's not even including cyclops sentinel for 50 points that can do pretty crazy stuff um stealth sentinel like all those things and then we just keep getting robots so house of x included like Karima and uh, whatever the the super air version of that was like Omega, the like other Omega? Omega is like another one that just refuses to die. So I love uh, I love that uh, Modok robot uh, from uh, Captain America and the Avengers. I guess the, oh yeah, the mind control and then you take damage after uh, your printed damage. Yeah, so. similar to like Exodus. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, there's just a ton of options. Like, you don't even have to be in the same kind of ballpark when it comes to building for a robot. Like, you can you can be kind of alpha strikey, or you can be, like, the tanky, don't die tech kind of stuff. Um, so as far as, like, Wait, do you need it with, or can it be, like, meta without Master Mold? Yes. It, it has been. Uh, it can be just kind of depends on the build and like what kind of new shenanigans come out with each set and Uh, now it's going to have leadership for 25 points yeah which is what makes it even better that's the big thing it just with with master mold it's absolutely meta yeah without it i think i don't i can't remember it winning any big big events or anything like that you know obviously besides isaac's win of course um but yeah like recently you know of course the cheapest leadership being jim hammond 35 points and 25 point just makes it easier and i think honestly uh even if not playing at 25 points there's just a lot there to do with master mold in the factory dial so uh good old eyes on bill did the first question of the show and the last question of the show here what legacy cards would you want to see in the fantastic four play at home kits he wants the uh i don't know if this is galactic guardians or guardians of the galaxy Doom, but I'm gonna assume Galactic Guardians 046 Doom because that's a rare. So let's go ahead, check out this Doom. What's a and this would I would say probably a Fantastic Four Doctor Doom semi like Silver Surfer, like one of those kind of characters we would say for the card. So, what figure would we want to get a legacy card for the Fantastic Four uh, play at home kit? Simeon, oh man, um. Oh, and just so everybody knows, this is the Doctor Doom that has like this Silver Surfer surfboard. I would. It was, it was a chase. Wow. That'd be wow. Super cool. So, keeping with the Galactic Guardians theme and kind of skipping over the uh, Fantastic Four theme, um, I would really like to see a new price point on and maybe like some new traits. The Galactic Guardians Mistress Death. It's the, the super rare that starts out with like. Four speed, and it's a twelve attack. Pen Psy for three damage, uh, three traits, no hiding from death. So Mr. Death ignored friendly characters and hindering terrain for line of fire purposes. Couldn't be carried, healed, placed by TK or targeted by Perplex. 
So it just kind of was what it was. Um, but 233 points was always way too much. By the time I got into the game, that was always way too much for what I could pay for what Mistress Death did. Um, similar to the Deadpool Mistress Death, it was uh, once per game when Mr. Steth would be KO'd. Instead, you placed her on the card. If she's on the card when an opposing character is KO'd, you may roll a D6. And then on a roll of a 6, you return her to the map in any square on click number 6. And then when the game ends, she is KO'd if on the card. Um, so, you, I mean, I think literally half the points or less... And this figure might be playable again with the current dial. Um, it's just, it's 233 points, and I don't see even like 100 points worth of like stats here. Like, there, I mean, the stats are there, it's just like the powers. Four speed is a lot to get past when you can't be TK'd or carried. Uh, it's, it's real hard. Now, you could have her pilot because she was a standard character. You could have her pilot like Thanos Copter or something silly like that. But uh, that's one character that I'd really like to see again. Um, and then another character that I'd really like to see brought back would be something like, uh, I don't know, good old uh, Scroll Emperor or uh, Spider Woman Scroll, the uh, Queen Veronke. Uh, scroll. Um, I really liked Secret Invasion. I wasn't a super big fan of the double card thing that they did, but I really liked having like primes be scroll versions. I thought that was cool. Uh, Dum Dum Dugan being like the scroll version of Dum Dum Dugan. Um, just different stuff like that. I thought it was really cool. I feel like there's gotta be a scroll movie in the works for marvel so it'd be fitting to have some hero click scrolls out before like that movie drops mm. i'm definitely uh to choose to uh the final figure that's from the captain america set that has the fantastic four keyword is the black panther so just because we already have the Invisible Woman, the Human Torch from that set, it'd be great to get a Black Panther also brought in. I really liked this Black Panther. Uh, you know, he has eight clicks of life. I, I wish we could chuck him. He's 128 points. You know, he's got a 17 defense most of his dial. I think if we can give him some, like, even, like, just, like, a busted trait where it's, like, traded something like Wakandan Tech ESD combat reflexes, you know, and maybe only drop his points by, like, if we could just, you know, chop off the 28, you know, make him 100 points even, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, he has a trait normally, which is him in front of the characters named Storm can use support, but can only use it on each other. Maybe make that they can use support as free, but only to target each other. I think that would be cool. And then he's got uh, some outwit mixed in, which is just outwit, and then the power can't be countered, which is cool. So I think something like that. And of course, he was made before the Wakanda keyword was a keyword. So obviously definitely give black panther the the wakanda keyword but i always really liked this rare black panther from the captain america set so i would i would like to see him again with a uh, legacy card and then of course you know shout out bombastic bag man yeah. if we could chop his point value down to like 75 or maybe you know i don't think he should be much lower if they keep it as unavoidable damage but what is bombastic this bombastic bag man bag? what is this okay so he Hold is it's, yeah. so it's spider man um, okay. it's Spider-Man when he lost his costume. So he's wearing Human Torch's costume with a paper bag over his head. Is that is what he's hilarious. actually called in yeah. HC rooms? It, yeah, he's Bombastic Bag Dash Man. Bombastic yeah. Bag, bag Man. Here. Um, as if so, like you were spelling Spider-Man. So yeah. Bag it's got hyphen, hyphen, hyphen Man. So yeah. he's got this trait called Kick okay. Me. Whenever Bombastic Bag Man takes damage oh from an gosh. attack, deal the attacker penetrating damage equal to the damage taken by bombastic Bagman. uh then he can't be healed except for the fantastic four team ability so oh, but he's oh. like 90 points is just kind of a lot um when you used to be able to copy mystics you'd copy mystics with the spider-man ta so then they would take whatever damage he was dealt and then also one more mystics damage on top of that which was just great so like bombastic Bagman is just hilariously fun he's only five clicks long so, you know, max amount of damage he was doing back then was six. 
you know, and it was only penetrating. You know, it wasn't crazy, it wasn't unavoidable or anything. So, uh, yeah, I would love to see a bombastic bag man come back and maybe make him uh, 50, 50 points if I could be ever so greedy, you know. Um, but yeah, he's just a funky little guy. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. And don't make him unique so I can have 12 of him on my team. No, please keep him unique. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. We don't need more than one. Yikes. Yeah. For those blow up. He's not really a blow up guy, but he, he's that, that, that feedback damage is, is rough. Uh, Matt, you got any uh, Fantastic Four, like Fantastic Four related characters you'd like to see legacy cards for for the uh, no. FF play at home? No, I, I mean, I have some people I'd like to bring back. Just I actually have two figures I'd bring back just with a legacy card, but they didn't have Fantastic Four keywords. I, I don't think I had anybody in mind. I mean, there's a Joe Fix at Hulk that's got a uh, Fantastic Four. Could go with him, you know? I was going to say, like, you could probably pick anything Marvel, and at some <laughs> point you could be like, well, like, I, I think they were Fantastic Four <laughs> adjacent. Well, they're not oh. like Avengers. That's that's a little so, bit of a stretch, but okay, Simeon. Okay, uh, are one of they the old, not? <laughs> one are of the older not? figures that, that I'd like to see have a legacy card that doesn't have it would be uh, I played the uh, uh, Venom pool a lot, and being able to take people's props Ooh, and making where they can good. only make one, yeah. uh, and that's their one time using it. The thing was uh, a, it's a, it was a. A real monster in seal. Uh, Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> it was. Up. Uh, Venom Pool kept me out of like the top eight uh, in the, the Deadpool sealed because of uh, just like the prob shutdown. My whole team was like Cable and then it was an X-Force team up. So it was like, so I've got Cable and then I've got theme team probs and then Venom Pool was like, yeah, each of you gets one. And I was like, cool yeah this and is it, awful <laughs> like i i mean i he's one of the better of the uh of those chases i think i think he was actually probably one of the best just for what he did since it was map wide but uh the other one that would be unpopular uh i uh, i got him super early but the carnage that was a 10 point colossal retaliator oh yeah um uh i thought the sculpt was just really awesome but Turns out he's actually just a really good figure, too, at 10 points. I mean, can't complain about that, but I don't think they would ever have the Fantastic Four team ability. But those are the two that would come to mind if they ever did decide to do a uh, uh, legacy card for him. I mean, it depends a little bit on like uh, how Tom Hardy's next movie goes, but oh, God. for sure, Sorry, yeah. Carnage it's could, been pushed back. could have uh, Fantastic Four team ability. Yikes. Who knows? Yep. Cletus we'll Cassidy could 20... be like, ah, uh, yes, my name's Cletus. Cletus Richards. Oh, the dude, forgotten God, please brother. Please stop. <laughs> please stop. No. You never know. Somebody broke Somebody broke my... Uh, who was it in the... Uh, of course, it's kind of... Uh, the, the Loki thing, uh, King the Conqueror. I didn't realize uh, that he is... Uh, there's also a version of him that was... Uh, Reed Richards' son, right? Uh, Nathaniel Richards. Yeah, uh, Nathaniel his, Richards. Uh, so his yeah. son, son, his like, so it's his his future dad, his like past son, his uh, mm -hmm. himself. I think at some point, yeah, I don't yep. know. Uh, yeah, pretty much everyone. It's all, yeah, it's all, it's all confusing. Whenever somebody told me that, I'm just like, well, it, 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 it sometimes the lore gets so convoluted that I can't follow it. No, there was okay. uh there was a joke in comics for a long time that just whenever a new villain came out, I was like, oh whatever, it's probably just King of the Conqueror because every time the Avengers or even the Fantastic Four would fight somebody, it would be like this new cool villain like the Scarlet uh, Centurion yeah. or Rama Tut <laughs> or something uh, crazy. Yeah. And then it would just end up being a version of just Kang the Conqueror. Gotcha. And so okay. there's a crazy amount of Kangs apparently throughout like the uh like there's the council of kangs like how there's like the council of reed richards what? kang is one of those people who's just in every alternate universe hey, those songs uh, it's well, very like annoying the council of council Ricks of rick yep. oh gee shut up shut up shut up don't <laughs> talk about that the Richard and show. show called don't if you watch the show 
Please stop listening to this podcast. Very oh, least, just whoa, don't. Whoa, I just whoa. never mention it to me ever again. I can't oh. stand that show. I hate it with Rick a burning Morty? passion. Oh, it's yes. so I, good. It is not. It is not. It's not for me. Wow. I don't like it. I uh, I don't have the. This guy doesn't uh, like America. I don't have the high IQ. <laughs> Rick doesn't he like only, America. He, it, dude, he just likes American Dad. Yeah, Rick doesn't like America because that's oh, what I, I honestly I hate all. Involves. I you hate have, all. If you any like and all adult animation, I can't stand. And with that, ladies and gentlemen. So it would seem that we've answered all our questions for the show and we should go home because goodness, it's getting late and we've kept Matt much longer than we should have. We should have started on time, but ladies and gentlemen, I I think we're going to, we're going to call it there. Uh, Matt, uh, is there any uh, plugs or shout outs or any players you want to mention in your area or any stores, you know, shout out the venue again, or just anybody you want to, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're, Gear Gaming in Fayetteville, of course. Uh, uh, you know, some of my friends, uh, Spencer and and Matt Hitton, they're some of the people I play with pretty consistently. But uh, uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for uh, uh, keeping me entertained while I do my work. That's the uh, the best thing. So, uh, uh, I got a lot of compliments on the tokens uh, that oh, I brought nice. today. So, so nice. it is it's definitely worth being a Patreon member to get those cool tokens just to have them so early i mean i got mine before i even got the the set in so i already had them ready to go so Mm -hmm. uh but yeah thanks for having me on i had a lot of fun all right yeah awesome sweet uh and with that you know you know it's good having you on like i think this is the first time we've probably had a three-hour show uh since obviously the rise and fall set that's that's a good or bad thing (laughs) i think it's a good thing when the conversation is just you know it's that natural and you can just talk about all sorts of stuff i think it's great so uh, I apologize I, for any tangents I made you guys listen to. So I, let me tell you something. Simeon's the tangent yeah. uh, king. So yeah, if it wasn't for Calder, I would never be reeled in, and it would just be like a twenty-four-seven live but stream of. I might be <laughs> Simeon's I, life. I'm, I might be feeding Simeon because I just keep adding on to anything <laughs> yeah. he said. <laughs> okay. Well, and if you want to add on to your Hero Clicks collection, you can <laughs> check you out. Go. Coolstuffinc.com, where you can find all the latest Heroflix singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Heroflix, no. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the 100? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not richer nonsense. I'm going to make Heroflix like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.